What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni-sensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn in Naruto with Dracul Myhawk Template, Part 4. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. At this moment, Ryujiro followed Orochimaru into a hidden room. Entering the room, various preserved human organs and special limbs were displayed before them. This was Orochimaru's personal laboratory, and the most striking aspect of the laboratory was the several pairs of crimson eyes. Initially, during the Uchiha clan massacre, Danzo had collected many pairs of eyes, and without Orochimaru's assistance, Danzo would never have been able to possess an arm full of terrifying Sharingan. As someone who coveted the Sharingan's power the most, how could Orochimaru not keep a few pairs of eyes for himself? However, transplanting the Sharingan was not so simple. Unless the recipient's body was compatible with the Sharingan, the body and eyes would reject each other and not integrate well. Kakashi was actually an example of this. Without the Sharingan, Kakashi might have gone further. The chakra consumption due to the Sharingan was also a considerable burden for him. I didn't expect you to be so interested in the power of the Sharingan, Orochimaru said, astonished. Ryujiro looked at those pairs of crimson eyes, a cold smile playing on his lips. Interested in the Sharingan? No. The only thing that could truly interest him was the Rinnegan. Even if the Sharingan evolved into the Mangekyo Sharingan, it couldn't be used frequently. Only the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan could provide the user with true power. Except for Ryujiro and Orochimaru, no one else knew about this laboratory. Even Ryujiro had only casually inquired about it before. Unexpectedly, Orochimaru had truly hidden so many Sharingan. No wonder the subsequent puppets of the Uchiha clan, like Shin, had so many Sharingan. Ryujiro had no intention of transplanting the Sharingan. He only wanted to test whether the Hogyoku could understand the secrets of the Sharingan. Suddenly, there appeared in Ryujiro's hand a dazzling object as brilliant as a gemstone. The shining black light made Orochimaru's expression change, as if his soul was trembling. Such a thing was definitely not ordinary. Orochimaru stared at the orb in Ryujiro's hand, his mouth dry, and asked, Ryujiro, what is that in your hand? Hogyoku, a thing that is capable of manifesting desires. Indeed, the Hogyoku could manifest desires, enchant hearts. Even though this wasn't the first time Ryujiro held the Hogyoku, its power still intoxicated him. Hogyoku? Orochimaru didn't know what the Hogyoku was, but his intuition told him that this spherical gem could peer into another, extraordinary world. In the moment due to Hogyoku's brilliance, the Sharingan preserved in the container began to rotate strangely. Seeing this scene, Orochimaru widened his eyes in disbelief, because the Sharingan, which was placed in the container like a windmill, began to rotate eerily. In an instant, the Sharingan in the container changed into a Mangekyo Sharingan. Orochimaru's eyes widened suddenly, his breathing becoming rapid. The evolution of the Sharingan should be stimulated by the emotions of the individual, but the Sharingan in the container was just a normal Sharingan. The orb actually contained such magical power. The development of events exceeded Ryujiro's expectations. It wasn't just Ryujiro who was evolving. It seemed that the Hogyoku itself was absorbing various energies and changing. From a single Mangekyo Sharingan to a double Mangekyo Sharingan, Orochimaru was completely stunned by the appearance of the third Mangekyo Sharingan. Such power surpassed his understanding. It continued to rotate, and Orochimaru couldn't help but gulp, unable to suppress the crazy ideas swirling in his mind. Could it be? The eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, the ultimate power of the Uchiha clan, was the next evolution. With a bang sound, the container exploded instantly, and as the Sharingan in the container burst open, the splashing eyeballs were about to fall on Ryujiro, but were abruptly bounced away by a spiritual pressure. Orochimaru was somewhat disappointed to see this. Was obtaining the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan really impossible? It seemed that he had thought too much. However, after witnessing Ryujiro's miraculous methods, he became more convinced that Ryujiro was the only one who could lead to the path of immortality. And his hope of obtaining perfect immortality also rested on Ryujiro. The moment the Hogyoku disappeared, Ryujiro couldn't help but furrow his brow, 
feeling an unbearable itch in his eyes. Ryujiro couldn't help but rub his eyes. When Orochimaru looked at Ryujiro's strange eyes and tremblingly pointed at him, Ryujiro, your eyes, my eyes? Ryujiro's heart skipped a beat. He quickly walked to a mirror in the laboratory and looked at his own eyes, his breath involuntarily halting at the sight of his distinct crimson eyes. How could this be possible? Sharingan, the crimson eyes with black tomo were undoubtedly Sharingan, although they were just regular Mangekyo Sharingan. But Ryujiro wasn't an Uchiha, and these eyes weren't transplanted by him. They were completely his own eyes that had undergone a mutation to become Sharingan. Could it be? Had the Hogyoku already understood the secrets of the Sharingan? The Sharingan. Ryujiro, your eyes have actually transformed into Sharingan. It's simply unbelievable. Orochimaru stared at Ryujiro with wide eyes, shocked. Ryujiro was somewhat puzzled, but he quickly regained his composure from the shock. Regardless, this was a good thing for Ryujiro. Only with the Sharingan could he possibly unlock the Rinnegan. The ability of the Rinnegan was indeed something Ryujiro coveted. The Hogyoku could materialize inner desires. Simply put, the Hogyoku was like what we call a wishing stone. Of course, the Hogyoku wouldn't blindly experiment with your wishes. It would only help guide you towards that direction if you had potential and talent in that aspect. What Ryujiro hoped for was to dominate everything with his own power, with no one threatening him. After all, the enemies he would face in the future were Kagaya and, besides Kagaya, the other Atsutsuki clan members, whose whereabouts were currently unknown. The only desire in Ryujiro's heart was to become stronger. Moreover, with the potential Ryujiro possessed from the system, the Hogyoku would guide him in which direction to evolve. Even Ryujiro himself wasn't sure. Ryujiro also found that he could switch back to his normal eyes when he didn't need to use the Sharingan. This was really beneficial for him caused it won't create any other problems for him, and also, he liked his dark green eyes more. The ability of the Sharingan. Indeed, the world seen through his eyes had become somewhat different. Orochimaru, who had recovered from his shock, looked at Ryujiro with fanaticism in his eyes. Unbelievable. He was certain that Ryujiro did not possess the bloodline of the Uchiha clan, yet he activated the Sharingan. What exactly was that mysterious orb resembling a gem? Since Orochimaru had met Ryujiro until now, he felt that every aspect Ryujiro showed was just the tip of the iceberg. Ryujiro touched the corner of his eye. This power was truly intoxicating. He closed his eyes and opened them again. After a while his eyes returned to normal. However, as time passed, influenced by Hogyoku, even without emotional stimulation, his Sharingan would gradually evolve. Apart from this, what Ryujiro was more interested in was another ability of the Hogyoku. If the ability of the Hogyoku was to manipulate the boundary between Shinigami and Hollow, then the Hogyoku itself also had the ability to influence souls, leading to Hollowification. If he could create Hollows, Ryujiro wanted to form an army of Arankars, but he still needed to experiment. Orochimaru, I'll borrow a few subjects from your cell. The subjects Orochimaru used for experiments were all living people, some of whom were bandits or ruffians, and of course, there were also a few rogue ninjas who had defected from ninja villages. Entering one of the cells, Ryujiro coldly ended the life of the person inside with a single stroke. Orochimaru didn't react, looking puzzled. What are you doing, Ryujiro? Although these subjects were not important in his eyes, they were still his personal property. Feeling the soul, Ryujiro coldly responded, just wanted to conduct an experiment. Experiment? Before Orochimaru could understand, the next moment, a strange scene made Orochimaru's scalp tingle. The soul that had not yet dissipated seemed to be affected at this moment, struggling violently with an expression of unbearable pain, emitting a terrifying howl. Suddenly, at this moment, an invisible chain pierced through the chest of the howling soul, revealing a hollow void in its chest. The person's soul gradually began to change rapidly. The ethereal soul gradually turned black, enveloped by black mist. The pitch-black figure gradually emerged, limbs, facial features, and even a long black tail behind its back. Its terrifying appearance, like wearing a grotesque mask, exuded a chilling coldness. Roar! The hollowed soul let out a sharp roar. This sound was different from that of ordinary beasts, causing many of the subjects to shiver involuntarily upon hearing it. Orochimaru's face changed drastically as he looked at the black monster before him in horror. Ordinary people shouldn't be able to see the hollows, after all, whether it was Shinigami or Hollow, they were ultimately soul-like existences that ordinary people couldn't see. Unless they possessed spiritual power or were inherently gifted individuals, they might be able to see them. Ryujiro, what exactly is this black monster? Orochimaru exclaimed in horror. 
Ryujiro looked at Orochimaru with astonishment. Orochimaru could see the hollows? What's going on? Suddenly, at this moment, the irrational hollow swung its massive arms toward Ryujiro. The massive force of the hollow was enough to smash the entire cell. Ryujiro coldly extended a finger, gathering immense spiritual pressure at his fingertip. Heido number 4 by Akurai. As he spoke, a dazzling lightning descended, bursting out from Ryujiro's slender fingertip like a roaring silver dragon. Boom! The hollow was instantly engulfed in terrifying thunder. The power of Bayakurai was far from over. The wall behind the hollow also suddenly burst open, creating a large hole. The entire laboratory kept shaking, as if it could collapse at any moment. Ryujiro looked indifferent as he glanced at the pierced hole. Hollowification was indeed possible, but this was just the lowest level of hollow. For Ryujiro, they were nothing but worthless trash. The strength of hollowification should be related to the person's own strength. It was basically impossible for weak hollows like these to become errand cars. At least, they would need a Juchas level grand hollows to have a chance to become errand cars, and even then, it was only a possibility. Orochimaru stood frozen in place, his face pale with shock. Just now? Was that lightning release? No, it couldn't possibly be lightning release. The power of that lightning was different from ordinary lightning release, and Orochimaru didn't sense any chakra nature in that strange white lightning. And what exactly was that black monster? Why did it suddenly appear? Could it be that the experiment Ryujiro mentioned was this black monster? Ryujiro, what exactly is that black monster? Is this the product of your experiment? Orochimaru's face twisted with madness as he interrogated Ryujiro regardless of the consequences. Hollow, a creature mutated from a soul. A soul mutated creature. Orochimaru's eyes constricted. No wonder he felt his soul trembling when facing the hollow just now. What kind of terrifying ability are you hiding, Ryujiro, that can manipulate souls? Hollows can devour each other and evolve, but there was no meaning in having a few people in this cell. For weak hollows to evolve into more powerful forms, they would need to devour at least hundreds of their kind. The existence of hollows was eternal, and besides Ryujiro, there might be no other means in this world to harm hollows. Perhaps the Reaper Death Seal of the Uzumaki clan could affect hollows. Of course, the Shinigami of the Reaper Death Seal seemed quite extraordinary. To create a large number of hollows, it would require a battlefield or a place of execution. The soul itself couldn't last long, and even after death, it could only linger briefly. Orochimaru felt even more fearful of Ryujiro, who could manipulate souls. Perhaps only the legendary Sage of the Six Paths could do such a thing. Ryujiro was indeed a terrifying person. The commotion at the base made Sasuke and Kimimaro, who had just returned, their faces changed involuntarily. Kimimaro, without a word, rushed straight to the laboratory. When he saw Ryujiro there his face suddenly darkened. Ten-finger drilling bullets. Kimimaro's finger bones shot out like bullet. Not only that, but he also pulled out a horrifying bone from his body and threw it at Ryujiro. Seeing this scene, Orochimaru, who was stunned, shouted anxiously. Kimimaro, stop! Before the bone blade could land on Ryujiro, Orochimaru mercilessly slapped Kimimaro in the face. Kimimaro was sent flying, crashing heavily into the wall. TSK. Orochimaru sure was ruthless with his own people. Cough cough cough. Kimimaro coughed several times, then looked at Orochimaru with disbelief. Orochimaru-sama? Orochimaru's gaze was deep. In his eyes, Ryujiro was his only hope for achieving immortality. Even Kimimaro couldn't be allowed to harm Ryujiro. Previously, Orochimaru did favor Kimimaro. If it weren't for Kimimaro's severe illness, perhaps he would have been Orochimaru's next vessel for reincarnation. Orochimaru's eyes turned cold as he stared at Kimimaro, with a glint of cold light in his eyes. Clang! Kuzanagi's sword appeared in Orochimaru's hand out of nowhere, causing Sasuke's expression to change drastically. Kimimaro didn't feel afraid. On the contrary, dying at Orochimaru's hands would be a decent way to go for him. Just as Orochimaru was about to make a move, a hand grabbed his arm. Orochimaru looked at Ryujiro in astonishment. Ryujiro? Ignorance is not a crime and besides, his actions were influenced by you, Ryujiro said calmly. Kimimaro. Ryujiro had a good impression of him. In fact, if it weren't for Kimimaro's severe illness back then, Gara in the original anime would have been seriously injured even with the sand armor protection. His life was tragic, and his death was equally regrettable, like a bright flower that was gradually withering. As for Kimimaro's illness, Ryujiro speculated that it was related to Kimimaro's bloodline. Part of it might be due to the hereditary diseases left by his Kekiai Genkai. 
Another part might be because Kimimaro used his own bones in battle, and when he retrieved his bones, they would be contaminated with the enemy's blood. If the blood on the bones contained bacteria or other microorganisms, bringing them back into the body could lead to infection. Perhaps that was also part of the reason. As for the inability to find a cure, Kimimaro's illness might far exceed the medical capabilities of this world. Out of respect for Ryujiro, Orochimaru slowly retracted the sword, his gaze coldly fixed on Kimimaro. I'll spare you this time for Ryujiro's sake. Feeling Orochimaru's cold gaze, Kimimaro's heart ached. He'd rather be killed by Orochimaru than be despised like this. Ryujiro, why are you here? Asked Sasuke in surprise after coming to his senses. Why can't I be here? Ryujiro looked Sasuke up and down. It seems your strength hasn't improved much. If you continue like this, I advise you not to seek revenge on Itachi. With your current strength, you'll just be throwing your life away. Sasuke clenched his fists, angrily roaring at Ryujiro. Damn you. You? Ryujiro ignored Sasuke, knowing that only by constantly provoking Sasuke could he grow rapidly. The experiment with the hollows was a success, so for now there was no rush to create the espada. Cough. Just then, Kimimaro, who had been fine, suddenly started coughing. If it were just a simple cough, it would have been fine. But Kimimaro's coughing wasn't ordinary. Instead, he coughed up blood. Kimimaro's body couldn't hold on much longer. Although Orochimaru's earlier slap didn't cause much damage to Kimimaro, Orochimaru's words undoubtedly affected Kimimaro's emotional state. Sometimes, emotions were also one of the reasons for the deterioration of a disease. Seeing Kimimaro pale, looking suddenly weak, Orochimaru sighed helplessly. Kimimaro, go back to the medical room and wait. Yes, Lord Orochimaru. Ryujiro looked at Kimimaro's back with deep eyes and suddenly shouted, Wait, Orochimaru, leave him to me. Perhaps I can solve his problem. Uh, Orochimaru's expression changed instantly. Ryujiro Kuen, are you serious? He spoke up. Kimimaro's illness had always been a difficult problem. Even Orochimaru and Kabuto, medical geniuses like them, were helpless against Kimimaro's illness. Kimimaro's body trembled slightly upon hearing this, turning stiffly to look at Ryujiro, unable to believe it. Ryujiro spoke again. Perhaps it's possible, but there's a certain risk. If unsuccessful, he will lose himself, become a mindless monster. Orochimaru trembled upon hearing this. Ryujiro Kuen, are you implying? Yes. Ryujiro nodded faintly. He knew that Orochimaru had guessed what he meant. Ryujiro wasn't a medical ninja. Since the medical jutsus of this world had no effect on Kimimaro's illness, the only way was to holify Kimimaro, allowing him to be reborn. Only then would Kimimaro's illness be eliminated naturally. Orochimaru stood there dumbfounded. Having seen the hollow, Orochimaru knew that Ryujiro's methods were definitely not simple ninjutsu, but rather a means beyond ninjutsu, perhaps reaching another dimension to affect the soul. Could it really eliminate Kimimaro's illness? Are you willing to come with me? Ryujiro looked at Kimimaro calmly. Kimimaro cast his gaze at Orochimaru. His loyalty had always been to Orochimaru. Only if Orochimaru agreed would Kimimaro follow Ryujiro. Orochimaru nodded. Seeing Orochimaru's agreement, Kimimaro had no objections. In addition to Kimimaro, Ryujiro also wanted the remaining four sound ninjas to come with him. They also had their uses. But in Ryujiro's eyes, the usefulness of these few people was not as good as Kimimaro's. Perhaps they only qualified to become nutrients for Kimimaro's hollowification. In this world, apart from ninjas and rogue ninjas, there were also bandits and brigands. Ryujiro didn't believe that once Kimimaro was hollowified, he would be a powerful espada level. The chances of this were slim to none. Ordinary hollows needed to consume a large number of their kind to evolve into espada. Since there was no Hueco Mundo in this world, so having a large number of hollows required souls. To have souls meant death, and with Ryujiro's strength, he could easily wipe out any small ninja village, but he hadn't reached the point of annihilating humanity. In a certain bandit stronghold, hundreds of people were engulfed by a terrifying sword energy, capable of splitting mountains and seas, destroying the entire bandit stronghold into two. Gulp. The four sound ninjas couldn't help but swallow hard, looking at the scene in front of them with extreme horror. They had no power to resist this terrifying sword energy. Was this power really controlled by a human? At that moment, neither Kimimaro nor the four sound ninja could react. When they saw a flash of light, they all covered their throats, showing expressions of disbelief and horror. Blood gushed out, pouring from the wounds on their neck. Even Kimimaro didn't understand why Ryujiro wanted to kill them. Didn't they agree to help him cure his illness? In the end, they all turned into cold corpses. 
Let the experiment begin. Ryujiro's gaze fell on Kimamaro. I hope you won't disappoint me. A mysterious black energy, akin to a black tide, surged under Ryujiro's feet, shrouding the entire mountain village. The souls lingering there underwent a transformation, just as Kimamaro and his companions' souls did in Ryujiro's eyes. Kimamaro and the four shinobi's souls wailed incessantly, their terrifying cries echoing throughout the village, giving off an eerie sensation akin to being in hell. The souls enveloped by the power of holification struggled in agony. Countless chains pierced through their chests, revealing a hollow void. Among the mountain bandits, there were hundreds of people. Yet, as they transformed into hollows, their terrifying roars reverberated throughout the mountain peak. Kimamaro and the remaining sound ninjas also turned into fearsome hollows. However, post-transformation, Kimamaro seemed somewhat different from other hollows. His spiritual pressure was much stronger than that of ordinary hollows, surpassing even the other four ninjas' spiritual pressure by just a bit. As expected, these four weren't worth placing too much hope in Diana. Now, Ryujiro's only hope was for Kimamaro to successfully evolve into a Minos Grande. Only by becoming a Minos Grande would there be hope of becoming an Arankar. The process of hollow evolution was simple. Kill each other, devour the power of one's kind. Hollows without reason were like wild beasts gone mad. Even if Kimimaro transformed into a hollow, he, like other hollows, possessed no rationality. Ryujiro's figure vanished in an instant, reappearing in the sky. In truth, Ryujiro seemed to be floating in the air, but he merely used gathered spirit particles as footholds, a sensation only he could perceive. Accompanied by spine-chilling roars, hollows began to fight and devour each other, searching for traces of their kind. When alive, Kimimaro could easily defeat these shinobis. Therefore, post holification Kimimaro was no exception. Ryujiro, standing in the sky, silently watched as the hollows slaughtered and devoured each other. The first to be killed by the holified Kimimaro was Taiya. After Kimimaro devoured him, Ryujiro could clearly feel a significant increase in Kimimaro's spiritual pressure. Good good. It seemed that even across different worlds, the process of hollow evolution remained unchanged. Now, it was up to Kimimaro's performance. Evolution into a Minos Grande wasn't as simple as it seemed. Even if hundreds of hollows devoured each other, Ryujiro would be satisfied if one Minos Grande emerged here. As the hollows devoured each other, the overwhelming spiritual pressure on Kimimaro and the remaining sound ninja four increased even more. Yet, despite this, they still hadn't reached the threshold of becoming a Minos Grande. Kimimaro, outside, heard the cries of his kind ahead. With a mad rush, his massive body charged forward, leaving behind giant footprints where nothing grew. Ryujiro strolled through the air toward the scene. The hollows fought and killed each other, their methods as simple as brutal beasts attacking each other. Apart from Minos Grande Ajuchas and Vasto Lord having some intelligence, only a few Minos Grande Jillians possessed limited wisdom, which wasn't much better than having none. After a short while, only about ten hollows remained on the mountain village. Although Kimimaro's spiritual pressure had multiplied several times, he still wasn't at the Minos Grande level. This won't do. If the remaining ten hollows aren't enough to make him evolve into a Minos Grande, it'll be troublesome. Ryujiro furrowed his brows, staring intently at the holified Kimimaro. Gradually, as the last hollow remained, the holified Kimimaro finally showed signs of change. He roared wildly, shaking the entire mountaintop with his cries. The next moment, Kimimaro's figure rapidly expanded, transforming into a Minos Grande the size of a small mountain. Sensing the astonishing spiritual pressure emanating from Kimimaro, a smile finally crept onto Ryujiro's face. He has finally evolved into a Minos Grande. The remaining hollow was mercilessly devoured by Kimimaro. After becoming a hollow, Kimimaro couldn't help but look up at the sky, his empty eyes staring at Ryujiro above. Those empty eyes, were they filled with longing? Since he had become a Minos Grande, the next step was to experiment and see if Kimimaro could further evolve and successfully become an Arankar. If he couldn't, he would remain nothing more than a Minos Grande at level of Ajuchas. The power of the Hogyoku itself existed to break the boundaries between Shinigami and Hollows. Shinigami could possess Hollow powers, and Hollows could gain Shinigami powers. A Hollow with Shinigami powers gave birth to an Arankar. A surge of spiritual pressure erupted like a flood, causing the entire mountain to rumble. The surrounding rocks instantly turned to dust under the immense pressure. Cracks resembling spiderwebs appeared around the mountain, spreading continuously. Roar! The transformed Kimimaro roared furiously, his spiritual pressure gradually fluctuating, and the hollow, empty eyes beneath his fierce mask began to change. 
Why, why did you kill me? Lord Orochimaru. I want to go see Lord Orochimaru. The transformed Kimimaro murmured with a deep voice. Seeing this, Ryujiro's heart filled with joy. Kimimaro was gradually regaining his consciousness. Boom. The next moment, the restless spiritual pressure on Kimimaro finally stabilized, bursting forth with a terrifying pressure several times stronger than before. A terrifying storm swept through the surroundings. Simultaneously, Kimimaro also began to change. Wrapped in a silver light, Kimimaro's body gradually shrank, and after the silver light dissipated, Kimimaro returned to his original form, with the only difference being an extra long sword in his waist sheath and a half-skull mask on his right ear. At this moment, Kimimaro's eyes still revealed confusion. Where am I? Kimimaro looked around, bewildered. Ryujiro, after seeing the successful Erenkar, couldn't contain his excitement. With the power of Hogyoku Kimimaro, was transformed into an Erenkar. The idea of becoming an Erenkar was indeed feasible with the use of Hogyoku. Kimimaro, do you remember me? Ryujiro looked calmly at Kimimaro before him. Upon hearing his name, Kimimaro trembled, memories flooding back, even those from after his holification resurfacing in his mind. Am I? Have you brought me back to life? Ryujiro looked at him with a smile. In a way, you've been given a new life. Feel your own power. Power? Kimimaro's eyes contracted, his mouth gaping in astonishment. What kind of power was this? This immense, unprecedented power coursing through him, along with his body no longer feeling weak. Before his transformation, although Kimimaro seemed no different from ordinary people, he was suffering from constant pain every second of his life. But now, that unbearable pain had completely vanished. It seems you've recovered. A smile flashed across Ryujiro's face. Although Kimimaro was puzzled, the only thing he understood was that Ryujiro had made it happen. The debilitating illness that had tormented him had completely disappeared. Kimimaro abruptly knelt on one knee. Ryujiro-sama, thank you for granting me a new life. Kimimaro's action wasn't out of loyalty to Ryujiro. His heart still belonged to Orochimaru, but he now placed Ryujiro in the same esteemed position. His rebirth and newfound strength were all thanks to Ryujiro's help. Moreover, the mysterious power he suddenly gained was still something Kimimaro needed to get used to. Ryujiro looked at Kimimaro with satisfaction. At last, an Erenkar was born. The power of the Hogyoku was truly fascinating. Not all Hollows could fully utilize their abilities. In this different world, Kimimaro had gained a new and unfamiliar power that required adaptation. Ryujiro patiently explained everything Kimimaro needed to understand. Over the next three days, Ryujiro guided Kimimaro in gradually mastering and controlling his spiritual pressure. Without perfect control over it, Kimimaro couldn't unleash the full power of an Erenkar. The sword at Kimimaro's waist was a Zampakuto, but different from a Shinigami's Zampakuto. Erenkars are hollows granted the power of a Shinigami, and their Zampakuto is essentially a sealed manifestation of their own power. In the Resurrection state, they merely release their original strength. A massive amount of spiritual pressure gathered at Kimimaro's fingertip, forming a concentrated ball of blue energy. Siro. Siro is a powerful blast used by Minos class and above hollows, created by concentrating their spiritual pressure. When unleashed, its high-density spiritual pressure could cause immense destruction. Boom! A deafening roar echoed as the blue beam exploded on the mountainside. A massive, visible shockwave erupted, carving out a significant portion of the distant mountain. Kimimaro's eyes widened in shock. This was his power? This was the formidable strength that Ryujiro spoke of for Erenkars? Kimimaro stood stunned for a moment, excited by his newfound power. With such power, he could better serve Orochimaru and Lord Ryujiro. Lord Ryujiro had mentioned that an Erenkar's power was not limited to this. The blade at his waist, the Zampakuto, held even greater power within its seal. Once he learned to use Resurrection, his strength would reach a new level. Ryujiro gazed at the mountain, half of it now blown away, and nodded in satisfaction. The power was impressive. However, Siro had a drawback. It required time to concentrate on high-density spiritual pressure. Even as an Erenkar, Kimimaro couldn't instantly fire a Siro. Nevertheless, it was a powerful trump card. Currently, Kimimaro's strength hugely surpassed than that of an average Kage-level ninja. Moreover, as an Erenkar, he also possessed Hiero. Ordinary ninjas would find it difficult to break through Kimimaro's Hiero defense. At this moment, Orochimaru was in the base, waiting for Kimimaro and Ryujiro's return. Had Ryujiro not ordered him to stay, Orochimaru's curiosity would have driven him to investigate already. Suddenly, Orochimaru looked up towards the sky at the base entrance. 
his eyes widening at the sight of two figures descending. Is that? Kimimaro and Ryujiro slowly landed. Orochimaru looked at Kimimaro, both familiar and unfamiliar, in disbelief. This cold and terrifying aura sent shivers down his spine. He had felt this kind of presence before. But, those creatures were monstrous, ugly, and seemed devoid of intelligence. However, the reborn Kimimaro looked completely different. Kimimaro, what is this form? Orochimaru stared at him, bewildered. Lord Orochimaru, Ryujiro-sama has granted me a new life. The illness that plagued me is completely gone. Seeing the skull mask covering half of Kimimaro's face, Orochimaru seemed to understand. Could it be that Kimimaro was reborn in a different form? Ryujiro, what is the meaning of this? Orochimaru urgently wanted to know the details. Ryujiro, not in a hurry, slowly explained the relationship between Hollows and Arankars. After some time, Orochimaru's breath became rapid, his eyes feverish as he pleaded with Ryujiro. Ryujiro, please turn me into a hollow too. Aaron Cars were eternal beings, and Orochimaru's pursuit was eternal life. If the existence of a hollow was eternal, Orochimaru would willingly abandon his humanity. Turning Orochimaru into a hollow, Ryujiro had considered it, but Orochimaru's soul was incomplete. Ryujiro didn't know what would happen if an incomplete soul underwent holification. Not now. Your soul is incomplete. Unless you retrieve your severed hands, Ryujiro shook his head. Orochimaru's gaze darkened as he looked at his bandaged hands, his face twisting in a grimace. That old man, he had blocked Orochimaru's path to immortality. Letting him die back then was far too lenient. Retrieve his hands. To undo the Reaper Death Seal, Ryujiro had already informed him that he needed the Shinigami Mask. The Shinigami Mask. A glint of fervor flashed in Orochimaru's eyes. His long-sought dream of immortality finally seemed attainable. Seeing Orochimaru's eager expression, Ryujiro shook his head helplessly. As expected, knowing the eternal nature of Aaron cars would drive Orochimaru mad. At that moment, Sasuke suddenly rushed out, grabbing Ryujiro's arms with a desperate look on his face, turn me into someone like Kimimaro too? Having witnessed Kimimaro's strength, Sasuke had only one thought, to become an Aaron car like him. Ryujiro coldly looked at Sasuke and shook off his hands. Why? What makes you think you deserve it? Sasuke, you are worthless right now. If you were stronger, I might consider your request. Everything is because you are too weak. Sasuke's pride was once again shattered. Clenching his fists in frustration, he turned and left. His departing figure looked somewhat desolate. Why do you keep provoking Sasuke, Ryujiro? Orochimaru asked puzzled. Ryujiro glanced at Orochimaru indifferently. Orochimaru, do you know how the eyes of the Uchiha clan evolve? Orochimaru's face twitched as he shook his head. Emotions. The Sharingan's evolution requires intense emotions and feelings. His hatred towards Itachi isn't strong enough yet. The power of the Uchiha clan isn't limited to that. Don't underestimate his potential. Orochimaru was somewhat shocked to hear Ryujiro's assessment of Sasuke. Ryujiro actually had such high hopes for Sasuke. In fact, Ryujiro had the means to help Sasuke become a hollow. However, he believed that Sasuke wasn't suited for that path. So was he provoking him for that reason? I have another reason for coming out this time, Orochimaru. Ryujiro continued, addressing Orochimaru. Orochimaru showed a hint of a smile. Ryujiro Koen, please speak. If there's anything I can help with, I'll do my best to assist you. It's not a troublesome matter. I need the location of Ryuchi Cave. Ryuchi Cave? Orochimaru's expression froze. Why would Ryujiro, who was doing well with the sage arts of Mayaboku, need the location of Ryuchi Cave? Four Sage Arts? Impossible. Ryujiro already possessed the Sage Arts of Mount Mayaboku, and he had heard from the Great White Snake Sage. A person couldn't bear multiple Sage Modes. One could only acquire the Sage Mode of Mount Mayaboku, Ryuchi Cave, or Shikatsu Forest. The effects brought by their respective Sage Modes were different. But, although others couldn't do it, but Ryujiro wasn't an ordinary person. Perhaps even if others couldn't, but Ryujiro could try. After all, Ryujiro's idea was to see what would happen if he learned the sage modes of the three major places. Orochimaru provided Ryujiro with the location of Ryuchi Cave, and shortly afterward, Ryujiro left. Unlike Mount Mayaboku, the creatures in Ryuchi Cave weren't so easy to deal with. Even Orochimaru had suffered under the hands of the Great White Snake Sage. But for Ryujiro, it was not a big deal. Those elders were just bullies who feared the strong. He didn't come to Ryuchi Cave to cause trouble. Ryuchi Cave, like Mount Mayaboku, was located in a special space. Ordinary people couldn't find its location. Moreover, Ryuchi Cave was between illusion and reality. 
Even if one knew the location of Ryuchi Cave, they could still get lost in the mist and perpetually wander in place. But as long as Ryujiro was in sage mode, he wouldn't be affected. His shadow clones in Kanoha had no problems. As long as Kanoha didn't encounter major disasters, his shadow clones could still manage. Although shadow clones couldn't maintain sage mode permanently like the original, they could automatically absorb natural energy and enter sage mode. After a week's time, Ryujiro finally arrived at the location Orochimaru mentioned. This place, Ryujiro could clearly see that it was a dead end blocked by mountains. But he could clearly feel that there was something hidden behind these mountains. Ignoring the dead end in front of him, Ryujiro walked straight past it, and a strange scene occurred. Clearly, it was a mountain, but Ryujiro strangely passed through it. Looking at the surrounding mist and the damp, cold caves, it gave off a creepy feeling. As expected, it's just as I suspected. The mountain I saw earlier was not a mountain at all. It was just an illusion created by Ryuchi Cave's barrier. Is this Ryuchi Cave? Ryujiro frowned. The natural energy here seemed different from Mount Mayaboku, this dark and damp environment. It really suited snakes. The drifting mist not only obscured vision but also, once the concentration was too high, could trap people in Genjutsu, making it impossible to leave Ryuchi Cave forever. It seems to be in this direction. For those who couldn't sense natural energy, they might get lost in Ryuchi Cave. But for Ryujiro, who was in sage mode, it was effortless. Walking through the mist, two slender figures approached from the distance. It's been a long time since anyone came to Ryuchi Cave. Hmm. Wait. One of them looked like a lowly, with long deep blue hair and exquisite features. The playful woman looked at Ryujiro in astonishment. You. In this state, you're still maintaining sage mode. Ichikishimaheim, one of the high-level members of Ryuchi Cave. Even though Ichikishimaheim had such exquisite features, Ryujiro remained unmoved. Because despite the fact that the woman in front of him appeared to be a beautiful woman, her true form was that of a snake. Her exquisite appearance was just a disguise. Ryujiro had always detested snakes, let alone being infatuated with one. Beside her, the mature-looking Tagerheim chuckled lightly. Ichikishima, it seems he's the one great white snake mentioned. Ichikishimaheim looked at the young Ryujiro with some disbelief. A young man like him actually came to their Ryuchi cave. This tender flesh. Ichikishimaheim sighed inwardly. If it weren't for the orders of the great white snake sage, she would have wanted to taste this young man's flavor. With those small arms and legs, the taste must be very delicious. Feeling Ichikishimaheim's greedy gaze, a trace of disgust flashed in Ryujiro's eyes. Sure enough, no matter how much a snake transformed into a human, it was still just a snake. Take me to see great white snake sage. Ryujiro said calmly and indifferently. Ichikishimaheim and Tagariheim furrowed their brows. Such an unlikable brat. In theory, there were three trusted elder-level members of Ryuchi Cave. There were only two in front of him, so where was the other one? Forget it. Ryujiro shook his head. Why bother thinking so much? Even if another one came, it would still be a snake. Even though Tagariheim and Ichikishimaheim transformed into humans, their cold, snake-like aura remained unmistakable. Ichikishimaheim, who led the way, asked, Boy, since you've already learned the sage arts of Mount Mayaboku, why did you come to our Ryuchi Cave? Generally speaking, people who entered Ryuchi Cave were either lost or came to learn sage art. But the Ryujiro in front of them had already learned sage arts, and he also seemed a little different than the people who used to come here, so they were naturally wary of him. The natural energy in the Ryuchi Cave seemed to be rushing into his body, like it found a new place to live. Both of them had the same questions in their mind. How could this boy be able to balance and control such a huge amount of natural energy? Of course, it's to learn sage arts, Ryujiro answered flatly. What? Hearing Ryujiro's words, Ichikishimaheim and Tagarheim were both stunned. Ryujiro suddenly paused his steps. The sage arts of each place actually repelled each other. This was something Ryujiro had not expected. However, it shouldn't be a big problem. Following the lead of Ichikishimaheim and Tagarheim, Ryujiro arrived at a grand temple. Tagriheim slowly said, Lady White Snake Sage is just beyond this door. We will not accompany you any further. After speaking, the two flew away, and the cave's mist began to spread again. Ryujiro paid no mind to the departure of the two snake spirits. He gazed at the towering steps before him, lifted his foot, and slowly walked towards the top of the temple. In front of the temple was a massive stone door. Hmm. Ryujiro lightly pushed the stone door, but it did not budge. It turned out that the stone door was also imbued with sage chakra. Ryujiro gathered sage chakra in his hand and easily pushed the door open. Inside the vast hall, atop a lofty platform, 
was a massive stone bed. On it lay a gigantic white serpent, her bright white scales particularly eye-catching. She held a long, slender pipe in her mouth. The serpent took a deep drag and began exhaling clouds of smoke before Ryujiro. This white serpent was the master of Ryuchi Cave, known as the White Snake Sage. The White Snake Sage's dark yellow eyes fixed on Ryujiro. Just as the old toad said, you actually mastered the perfect sage mode. The White Snake Sage's voice, through the smoke, reached Ryujiro's ears. Merely a human, yet he could maintain sage chakra even in his normal state. What a pity. This young man was not the prophesied savior. His fate was unclear and unfathomable. In the shinobi world, such a peculiar existence had emerged. Despite being shocked by Ryujiro's sage chakra in his normal state, the white snake sage, having lived for thousands of years, did not let her emotions show. The rules of Ryuchi Cave required that to learn its sage mode, one must pass trials. But for Ryujiro, those trials were mere child's play. White Snake Sage, may I learn the sage jutsu of Ryuchi Cave? Ryujiro maintained a polite demeanor. The White Snake Sage looked at Ryujiro, of course. However, the sage modes of different regions repel each other. You have already learned the sage mode of Mount Mayaboku. I don't mind if you want to learn our Ryuchi Cave's sage mode as well. But if the two sage modes conflict, causing the natural energy to become unbalanced, you will ultimately turn into a statue due to natural energy erosion. The White Snake Sage, who admired talent, wanted to see what Ryujiro's future held. She didn't want such a monstrous genius to fall due to some mishap. Thank you for the warning, but I still wish to give it a try. The White Snake Sage sighed helplessly and said calmly, Very well then. Suddenly, the space before Ryujiro began to distort. Was this a space-time ninjutsu? When Ryujiro's vision returned to normal, he was no longer in the hall. In front of him was a giant snake statue. These statues, like the toad statues at Mount Mayaboku, had turned to stone due to natural energy erosion. In the center of the numerous snake statues, a green scroll floated and shone on a pedestal. That is the scroll for training in Ariuchi Cave's sage mode. This space is specially built by me. Only those who master the Ryuchi Cave's sage jutsu can leave this place. Good luck. At this moment, the white snake sage, standing beside Ryujiro, had disguised herself as an elderly lady, wearing a white robe, appearing kind and gentle. After speaking, she gradually disappeared from Ryujiro's sight. Ryujiro was not surprised. After all, if the three snake princesses could transform into human form, it was expected that the white snake sage could as well. He just hadn't expected her to take the form of an old lady. Never mind, there's no need to dwell on it. Let's see what's special about Ryuchi Cave's sage arts. At this moment, the white snake sage had returned to the hall, reverting to her original form of the white serpent. She took a deep drag from her pipe, mastering sage jutsu in less than a day. Could the old toad's words be true? If it's true, then this boy is truly terrifying. The three snake princesses had arrived in the hall. Lady White Snake, the three snake princesses knelt respectfully. Ichikishimaheim hesitated before looking up and asking, Lady White Snake, has that human been sent to the sage arts training ground? Yes, the White Snake Sage responded softly. Lady White Snake, isn't this against our rules? It's nearly impossible for a human to master two different sage jutsu. Besides, that boy is just a human. Before Ichikishimaheim could finish, a tremendous pressure of sage chakra filled the hall. The suffocating and oppressive feeling made the three snake princesses prostrate themselves, trembling. The white snake sage's cold gaze was fixed on Ichikishimaheim. Ichikishima, don't get too ahead of yourself, know your place. That boy has my approval. Since when do my decisions require your input? Ichikishimaheim looked up in terror. Lady White Snake, I did not mean that. I just thought it was inappropriate. As soon as she finished speaking, she regretted it. The next moment, an immense sage chakra crushed her into the ground, blood staining her body, presenting a gruesome sight of blood flowing from her seven orifices. Considering your loyal service to Ryuchi Cave for many years, this will be a lesson. If there's a next time, I will flay you alive. Tagariheim and Tajitsuheim shuddered at the sight of Ichikishimaheim's condition. Although they had their own opinions earlier, they were glad they hadn't voiced them. Otherwise, their fate would likely have been the same as Ichikishimaheim's. Unaware of the happenings outside, Ryujiro found it indeed challenging to balance two sage mode. Though the natural energy within him had become unbalanced, his body, influenced by the Hogyoku, did not suffer natural energy erosion. After three days, Faint purple eye shadows finally appeared at the corners of Ryujiro's eyes. He had finally mastered the sage mode of Ryuchi Cave. Ryujiro, seated atop the giant snake statue, 
slowly opened his eyes. Now, his aura was even more powerful, and the Hogyoku within him had become even purer and more radiant. This training in Ryuchi Cave had not only enhanced his recovery, but also allowed his body to move with the agility of a snake. In simple terms, Ryujiro could transform into a snake form similar to Orochimaru. In terms of essential power, both sage modes had similar enhancements. The combination of sage modes gave Ryujiro a distinct feeling. It wasn't merely an increase in strength. He could clearly feel that his body had undergone some subtle changes. This sensation was akin to the Great Toad Sage and the White Snake Sage. However, Ryujiro looked at his reflection in the pool, noticing the purple eye shadow at the corners of his eyes, and then closed his eyes. Gradually, the purple eye shadow faded away. Clenching his fist, he muttered, the increase in power isn't that significant, but this feeling, my sage chakra has increased several times compared to before. After completing the training in Ryuchi Cave, Ryujiro could distinctly feel the differences between this alternate space and the outside world. His fingertip drew a line across the giant snake statue, and a powerful suction pulled Ryujiro inside. At the same time, the white snake sage, who was in deep slumber, abruptly opened her eyes. Ryujiro slowly emerged from another dimension. You actually succeeded? She was shocked, staring at Ryujiro, whose aura was even more terrifying than before. Two types of sage arts. This boy had actually mastered two sage jutsu, truly terrifying. How could Kanoha produce so many monsters? This boy was far more frightening than Kanoha's first Hokage. She had never seen such a terrifying human. The immense sage chakra and the sage body were almost on par with those who had lived for countless years. Yes, this is all thanks to your help. The white snake sage shook her head and smiled. I have done nothing. It is you who achieved the coexistence of the two sage jutsu. Do you still wish to obtain the sage jutsu of the Shikatsu forest? Ryujiro nodded undeniably. Ryujiro wanted to master all three sage modes of the three sacred places because no one knew if there was any connection between the sage arts of the three sacred places. If all three sage modes were gathered within one person, what kind of transformation would occur? The white snake sage was silent, looking at Ryujiro and slowly said, if you can integrate all three sage arts, perhaps you really could achieve what is recorded in the ancient texts. The so-called ascending to immortality. Ascending to immortality? Ryujiro frowned. It seemed there were indeed some things about the sage arts of the three sacred places that he didn't know. Although he knew the main storyline of the original anime, this was a real world of Naruto he had come to, a real and vivid world. Even if he knew most of the stories and some secrets from the plot, there were always things in the ninja world he didn't know. White Snake Sage, what does ascending to immortality mean? The White Snake Sage replied earnestly, the ancient texts of the three sacred places record that if someone can master the sage arts of all three sacred places, they can ascend to immortality and become a true sage as described in legends. It's said that once ascended, the practitioner will undergo significant changes. Becoming a true sage, Ryujiro touched his chin. This was indeed interesting. But for Ryujiro, who was already on path of immortality, this meant nothing much. He knew when the Hogyoku completes its evolution, he will evolve into another higher level being. What he was doing now was to make the Hogyoku even more perfect. The Hogyoku had its own consciousness. Not only did Ryujiro want to become stronger, but the Hogyoku itself was also unsatisfied. If he integrates some elements from this world, perhaps the Hogyoku would undergo unexpected changes as well. Character Template Sosuke Aizen Character Unlock Progress 11% Only 11% It seemed that as the Hogyoku evolved, the progress would accelerate, and his own eyes, Honestly, Ryujiro had not expected that the Hogyoku could actually analyze and replicate the Sharingan's power, and even though he didn't have Uchiha blood, he unexpectedly awakened the Sharingan. You are the most monstrous human I've ever seen. To be honest, I didn't think you could perfectly integrate two sage arts at first, but now after you did it, I have nothing more to say, perhaps you really can achieve the immortality recorded in the texts. The white snake sage was also looking forward to seeing if the recorded ascension truly existed. She had high hopes for Ryujiro's future. Ascending to immortality. Indeed, it was something to look forward to. Ryujiro's eyes gleamed with an unusual light. Currently, in Kanoha, Ryujiro's shadow clone had been helping with Hokage's duties. In the past few days, no one had noticed that the Ryujiro before them was just a shadow clone. As Ryujiro left the Hokage's office, he suddenly sensed an extremely unusual aura a cold, damp, and repulsive feeling. Ryujiro's figure instantly vanished from the street, and Kakashi, who was secretly following him, 
was momentarily stunned. He looked around but couldn't detect Ryujiro's presence. Where did that kid go? Kakashi couldn't help but feel that Ryujiro's friendly demeanor was just a facade. His third sense told him that Ryujiro's true nature was hidden beneath the surface. Why did the Hokage advisors conclude that Sasuke had defected to Orochimaru? What did Ryujiro and the advisors discuss that day? Kakashi had been investigating Ryujiro as soon as the news of Sasuke's defection was announced, and he found some clues regarding it. It was rumored that someone had seen Sasuke and Ryujiro confronting each other on the street before disappearing, but no one knew what happened afterward. If that was the case, how did the Umbu see Sasuke and Orochimaru together? Given Orochimaru's personality, he would never let an Umbu go easily. Something was surely fishy about all this. On the Hokage Rock, Ryujiro's clone frowned, sensing the unusual chakra fluctuations around him. What was going on? Someone had definitely been here, but his observation Haki didn't detect any other presence. Forget it. Since they were gone, there was no need to dwell on it. After Ryujiro disappeared, a figure slowly emerged from a tree. His perception is too sharp. If we weren't disguised within the tree, we would have been discovered. Black Setsu stared deeply at the spot where Ryujiro had left. These Kanoha ninjas were not simple. The plan needed to be accelerated. Why was it that Ryujiro could put Itachi under Jinjutsu, who has the Manjiki Sharingan? Damn it, Kanoha is really lucky. Gritting his teeth, Abito's cold eyes behind the mask glared like frost. Abito, according to the intel, this guy has already mastered the sage arts of Mount Mayaboku, and it's the perfect sage mode without any limitations. You should be aware of the power of sage mode. But worry not I have some additional information regarding that boy. Black Setsu said deeply. That's right. Sage mode is indeed daunting, but it has a time limit. The rumor of Ryujiro's permanent sage mode was simply false. Black Setsu had seen it with his own eyes. Ryujiro didn't maintain sage mode all the time. It was just fake news spread by Kanoha. However, even Black Setsu couldn't imagine that it was just one of Ryujiro's shadow clones. As for Ryujiro himself, he was still on his way back. Nagato's side has already captured the two tails and four tails. However, the one-tailed Jinchuriki from Sunagakir is missing. At that time, who exactly killed Sasori and Daidara is still under investigation. Black Setsu said slowly. Eh Nagato, those who died were just trash? The deaths of Daidara and Sasori show their incompetence. Next, we need to speed up the capture of the tailed beast. Nagato is already formulating a plan to capture the nine tails. Thinking of yourself as a god, but in the end, you're just a pawn. Abito sneered, and the surrounding space suddenly distorted, absorbing him into the vortex. Black Setsu looked up at the sky, letting out a chilling laugh. Abito, whether it's you, Nagato, or Achiha Madara, you're all just part of the plan I created. I am the true mastermind behind the workings of the entire shinobi world. When the four major ninja villages learned that the one-tailed Jinchuriki had defected from Sunagakir, Almost all the villages began to search for the one-tailed Jinchuriki with great effort. Due to the appearance of the Akatsuki, this previously unheard of organization gradually came into the view of the major villages. Kumo team. According to their information, the one-tailed Jinchuriki had appeared in this area. Led by Derui, the search team was looking for Gara in the vicinity of Tanagakir in Land of Rivers. The team from Kumogakure appeared in Tanagakir and the Tanagakir ninjas could do nothing but protest. After all, Kumo is one of the five great ninja villages, while Tanagakir is just a small village. As long as the Kumo ninjas didn't threaten the village, the Tanagakir high-ups turned a blind eye. Captain Derui, we haven't found any trace of the one-tailed Jinchuriki. Captain, could our information be wrong? Why would the one-tailed Jinchuriki come here? Moreover, the dango shop we passed earlier on the way had signs of a battle. Yeah, right? Such terrain damage could only be caused by an S-rank jutsu, Derui's face darkened. Kumo had recently lost the two tails Jinchuriki to the Akatsuki. It's said that the four tails, Rashi, was also captured by this organization. Capturing tailed beast Jinchuriki. What was Akatsuki up to? At least for the entire shinobi world, the Akatsuki has become a significant threat. Captain Derui, could the Tanagakir high-ups be hiding the one-tailed Jinchuriki? A Chunin spoke up. Derui shook his head. Tanagakir wouldn't be that foolish. Possessing something that doesn't match their strength would only lead to destruction. They had been out of the village for a month. It seemed the one-tailed Jinchuriki was hiding. This aimless search wasn't helping. The only concern now was whether the Akatsuki had already taken the one-tailed Jinchuriki. Retreat and return back to the village. On Derui's command, the Kumo search team left Tanagakir. 
Meanwhile, Ryujiro was leisurely making his way back to the village. There was no need to rush to learn the sage arts from Shikatsu Forest. If he wanted to know its location, he could just ask Tsunade. Not long ago, he received a message from a shadow clone indicating someone was spying on Kanoha. As for who it was, Ryujiro wasn't sure. However, no matter who it was, Ryujiro didn't care much. Ryujiro's current strength had completely surpassed the likes of Super Kage level ninjas. Even if he faced a resurrected Uchiha Madara, Ryujiro believed he could easily handle him. With the Chunin exams and the altered storyline, he wondered if the pain invasion would happen sooner. He heard that Jiraiya left the village to investigate the Akatsuki. Hopefully, Jiraiya wouldn't do anything reckless. Otherwise, Ryujiro felt it would be a shame if Jiraiya died. If possible, he would prevent that from happening. At this moment, Ryujiro suddenly stopped in his tracks. Several figures surrounded him. Ryujiro glanced at their headbands. Kumo ninjas. Captain, this guy is a Kanoha ninja. Darui appeared in front of Ryujiro. Black shirt, white Hayori and a sword at his waist. Could this guy be? Darui's eyes shrank. Kanoha's sword prodigy? Why would Kanoha's Hokage assistant be here? Darui looked deeply at Ryujiro. Hokage assistant? The other Kumo ninjas were stunned, looking at Ryujiro in disbelief. This guy here was the Hokage assistant? How was that possible? Wait, is this guy the rumored sword prodigy of Kanoha, said to be even more terrifying than the once famous white fan? In any village, there are ninjas who infiltrate enemy nations. According to their intelligence, Ryujiro had been staying in the village. Gasp, a shadow clone in Kanoha. As the Rakage's right-hand man, Darui quickly understood. Why can't I be here? Why does it concern you Kumo ninjas? You know I'm in a quite good mood today so if you leave now, I might let you go. Killing these Kumo ninjas wouldn't take much effort for Ryujiro. Damn brat, what did you say? Darui's eyes darkened. Kanoha and Kumo Gakure were enemies. If this kid dies here, wouldn't Kanoha lose a powerful shinobi? Darui looked at Ryujiro carefully. This guy didn't seem as terrifying as the rumors said, more like a weak scholar. Could it be that their intel on Ryujiro was false? Arrogant, Darui snorted. It's rumored that Kanoha's sword genius surpasses the white fan. Today, I want to see if the rumors are true. Darui exuded a fierce killing intent. Hearing this, Ryujiro shook his head helplessly. Some people never learn. It seems these Kumo ninjas were determined to die today. Ryujiro drew his Zampakuto, glancing at the Kumo ninjas. Kyoka Suijetsu, what are you doing? Darui had a bad premonition in his heart. Ryujiro's face showed a playful smile. Who knows? Darui's face suddenly darkened. Oomph. Stop pretending. Darui's eyes were deep and his sword, imbued with lightning chakra, shone brightly with lightning. Ha! Darui slashed down with his sword, and the lightning chakra instantly burst out, ravaging the surroundings with many bolts of lightning. Ryujiro blocked the attack with his sword, the playful smile still on his lips. For some reason, Darui felt a chill down his spine. Captain Darui! Hearing the shout from the surrounding Chunin, Darui paid no mind. As expected, even though Ryujiro might not be as powerful as the rumors claimed, but he was still not simple to deal with. In that case, nobody could blame him for being ruthless. Hey, you guys help out? The moment Darui turned his head, his pupils suddenly shrank. Splurt. Blood splattered out, and Darui's expression twisted in pain as he spat out blood. He looked incredulously at his village's ninjas. What are you all doing? Why were these Kumo ninjas looking at him with eyes filled with resentment? And why were some of their eyes even teary? You bastard! You killed Captain Darui! Unforgivable! Under the influence of Kyoka Suijetsu, in that moment, what the Kumo ninjas saw was Ryujiro stabbing Darui in the abdomen with his sword. And the Ryujiro they saw was indeed Ryujiro. This was the terrifying power of Kyoka Suijetsu. It could manipulate the enemy's five senses, making them see what the user wished. What are you all talking about? Splurt. Several more sharp blades pierced into Darui's stomach, and he couldn't bear it anymore, letting out a wretched scream. One of the Kumo ninjas, who was not hypnotized, stood there with a pale face, horrified as he watched the scene unfold before him. He shouted in terror, Hey you all, what have you done? Ryujiro chuckled lightly, stepped back a few steps, and released the power of Kyoka Suijetsu on the few Kumo ninjas. Ah! Those Kumo ninjas fell to the ground in fright, looking in horror at Darui, who had several swords stuck in his abdomen. Why? Why was it, Captain Darui? Wasn't that the Kanoha ninja just now? Damn it! Splurt! Darui again spat out blood, looking at Ryujiro with terrified eyes. Genjutsu? When did you use the Genjutsu? 
Ryujiro looked calmly at the distressed Derui. You're asking the wrong question. When did you think I wasn't using Jinjutsu? From the moment I drew my sword, everything was under my control. Could it be? It was at that moment. Forget it, nothing matters anymore. With your injuries, you won't last long. But don't worry, your subordinates will accompany you. Derui gritted his teeth, his face full of unwillingness. He dropped his blade and quickly formed hand seals. Lightning release. Black Panther. A black, panther-shaped lightning erupted from Derui, ravaging the surroundings. The black lightning stormed towards Ryujiro, and the ground was etched with black lightning patterns. Bakudo number 81. Danku. As Ryujiro's words fell, a near-transparent defensive wall rose up, and the black, panther-shaped lightning vanished upon collision. What was that just now? Using a ninjutsu without any hand seal? Derui gradually lost consciousness, his body uncontrollably leaning backward. Damn it, am I really going to die here? Derui fell to the ground, lifeless. Captain Derui! Some of the Kumo ninjas, driven by rage, charged at Ryujiro. In just three seconds, those Kumo ninjas had no idea when Ryujiro had circled behind them. Ryujiro's Zampakuto was stained with blood. With a forceful shake, the blood dripped to the ground. Splurt! Splurt! The remaining Kumo ninjas were instantly killed, their gory wounds shocking to behold. They looked at Ryujiro in terror, using their last bit of strength to utter a word. Monster! The Kumo squad was annihilated. Looking at the lingering souls, Ryujiro absorbed them into the Hogyoku. Just a few souls like these had no significant effect. In fact, even a Jillian-level hollow was not much meaningful to Ryujiro. What he sought was a Vasto Lord, but after all, this wasn't the world of Bleach. There was no Hueco Mundo in this world. Creating a Vasto Lord was difficult in this world. The right-hand man of the Rakage, huh? No one knew who killed Derui and his team, but he could already imagine the fourth Rakage's rage upon learning of this. In fact, there was another place in this world that Ryujiro was quite interested in, and that was the ancient kingdom of Roran. The legendary vast energy of the Ryamayaku was indeed something Ryujiro was concerned about. The key point was, the power of the Ryamayaku could send Ryujiro back in time. If he returned to the past, would there be another version of himself in the past ninja world? Nothing much had happened in Kanoha either. It was just Hinata. Before leaving, he had told Hinata that he would be away for a while, and apart from Hinata, no one knew about the Shadow Clone frequently appearing in the Hyuga Clan. Should I go back? I've been out for over a month already. If the power of the Ryamayaku unexpectedly sends him to the past, Ryujiro wouldn't know how long it would take. Never mind, let's go back to Kanoha. Hyuga Clan in Kanoha. During the days Ryujiro was away, Hinata felt an emptiness in her heart, as if she had lost something. Although she had the company of his Shadow Clone, Hinata knew that a Shadow Clone was just a Shadow Clone and not the real Ryujiro. Ryujiro Kuen, it's almost two months. When will you come back? Hinata, I miss you so much. At this moment, Ryujiro's shadow clone pushed the door open and entered. Hinata, the real body is back. After saying this, the shadow clone Ryujiro turned into a wisp of smoke and disappeared in the room. Hinata was stunned for a moment, then ran out barefoot without caring about putting on shoes. At the gate of the Hyuga compound, Hinata looked around anxiously and finally saw that familiar figure. Her eyes instantly turned red, and she ran towards that familiar figure. The girl threw herself into Ryujiro's arms. Hinata hugged Ryujiro tightly and murmured softly, Ryujiro Kuen, I missed you so much. Ryujiro was taken aback for a moment, then a smile appeared on his face as he gently patted Hinata's head. He could feel the girl's deep longing for him. After spending some time with Hinata, Ryujiro went to meet Gai. Yo, Gai-sensei? Ryujiro arrived at the training ground. Ryujiro, it's been a while. Might Guy looked at the dashing young man in front of him and couldn't help but feel nostalgic. It hadn't been that long since the young man before him had become an assistant to the Hokage. Compared to the sharp demeanor Ryujiro had before, he now seemed more approachable. Guy sensei this is a mission from the Hokage. Ryujiro took out a scroll and handed it to Might Guy. Oh, it's an A-rank mission, escorting the daimyo of the land of Earth. Leave it to me. Guy grinned and gave Ryujiro a thumbs up. Ryujiro smiled faintly. An A-rank mission was naturally not a challenge for Kanoha's Blue Beast. After all, Might Guy opening the seventh gate could even take down most elite Jonin. Moreover, this mission was merely escorting the daimyo of the Land of Earth, unlikely to encounter any danger along the way. Guy sensei Lee emerged from the nearby woods and was momentarily stunned upon seeing Ryujiro. Eh, Ryujiro is here too. Long time no see, Ryujiro. Yes, long time no see, Lee. It's really nostalgic. 
You've become the Hokage's assistant now. I have to catch up with you. A determined look flashed in Lee's eyes. Might Guy hesitated for a moment before asking, Ryujiro, how many gates of the eight gates can you currently open? Eh? Lee looked shocked. Ryujiro knows eight gates too? Boom, a large fist landed on Lee's head. Lee, how many times have I told you this? Apologetically, Lee bowed to Guy. I'm very sorry, Guy-sensei. I remember now. The eight gates, huh? I can open up to seventh gate. Ryujiro responded calmly. Hearing this guy and Lee couldn't help but gasp. He could already open the seventh gate. As expected of a genius, Lee looked at Ryujiro with admiration. Ever since Ryujiro became the Hokage's assistant, he had become Lee's idol. While Lee could barely open the fifth gate, Ryujiro had already reached the seventh gate. Indeed, surpassing you is difficult. Ryujiro, ding. Ryujiro shook the bell at the door. Who is it, so early in the morning? Naruto, half awake, opened the door, rubbed his eyes, and was momentarily stunned seeing Ryujiro. Ryujiro? Why are you here? Ryujiro tossed a bag of food and ramen into Naruto's arms. Just checking on you. Ryujiro stepped into the room, immediately catching a strange odor. Seeing the messy room, a few black lines appeared on Ryujiro's forehead. Naruto? Is this how you live at home? Ha ha ha. Naruto laughed awkwardly, scratching his head, his face turning red. Since I'm alone at home, I didn't bother tidying up. Ryujiro shook his head helplessly and both of them started cleaning. About ten minutes later, several bags of trash were piled at Naruto's door. Looking at the now clean room, Ryujiro felt much more comfortable. It seems my OCD has followed me to this world. Huh? Ryujiro, what did you just say? Nothing. Ryujiro and Naruto sat in the room, both opening a cup of instant ramen, waiting for the water to boil. Ryujiro, you've become the Hokage's assistant. Keeping up with you now is really tough. Naruto's face showed a bitter smile. Ryujiro looked at Naruto, walked over, and gave him a light chop on the head. Naruto yelped in pain, clutching his head. Ryujiro, what are you doing? My head isn't made from stone. Seeing the angry Naruto, Ryujiro nodded. Well, it seems fine. It doesn't matter and even if I'm the Hokage's assistant, our relationship wouldn't change. The position of the Hokage's assistant is just something that old woman forced me into. I wouldn't bother with such a troublesome role otherwise. Huh? Ryujiro, if you say that, the fifth Hokage might kill you. Naruto shivered, remembering the time he called Tsunade Granny and the subsequent events. Women were indeed terrifying. Ha! Huh, I'm not afraid of her. Ryujiro, holding a kettle, poured hot water into Naruto's cup first, then his own. For some reason, Naruto felt a certain warmth in his heart. He touched his chest, feeling his heartbeat. Was this the feeling of home? Ryujiro asked Naruto about his recent activities. Jiraiya had left a week ago on a mission, leaving Naruto still unable to fully control the Nine Tails chakra. The Nine Tails' hatred for humans hadn't diminished, especially after losing half of its chakra and being sealed in a kid's body. The Nine Tails was just waiting for an opportunity to break free. Jiraiya. Hopefully, it's not what I'm thinking. If Jiraiya has gone to the Akatsuki, it could be dangerous. Ryujiro, what's it like to stay by the Hokage's side? Naruto asked while eating his ramen. Hmm? Why do you ask? Because I want to become the Hokage someday. I'm asking you so I can get used to the role. Naruto said confidently, as expected of you. But that feeling of being watched, it seemed to come from the Nine Tails inside Naruto. The Nine Tails. No rush. Once Naruto can completely control the Nine Tails chakra, it won't be too much of problem. It's nothing special, just a lot of hassle. Huh. That can't be. Ryujiro, being the Hokage is everyone's dream in the village. Naruto looked incredulous. Ryujiro looked at Naruto calmly. Naruto, not everyone's dream is the same. I'm not interested in the Hokage position at all. Seeing the sincerity in Ryujiro's eyes, Naruto knew he wasn't lying. Tomorrow you should get ready. There's a mission for you. Huh? A mission? But I'm just a genin. I can't do a mission alone. Naruto's excitement turned to disappointment. Pervy Sage had gone off on his own mission, refusing to take him along. Seriously, am I even his student? As Ryujiro was leaving, he turned to look at Naruto. I'll go with you. Originally, as an assistant to the Hokage, Ryujiro should have stayed by Tsunade's side. However, Tsunade couldn't control Ryujiro, so she could only let him to take part in some missions. It's been a while since I've been out. I miss this feeling, Naruto exclaimed excitedly, looking around. Ryujiro, what mission are we on this time? Naruto asked eagerly. Ryujiro responded calmly, just an A-rank mission, A-rank. Naruto's excitement grew as he pumped his fists, boasting. 
Finally, I get a chance to shine. This A-rank mission was commissioned by the Land of Flowers. The country had been frequently harassed by a rogue jonin from Kirigakur who had established his own force. The rogue ninja's activities had become a significant threat to the Land of Flowers, causing them to lose several ninjas with each attack. Desperate, they sought help from other ninja villages. However, no village was willing to intervene. As a result, the Land of Flowers issued a reward and sought assistance from the other main villages. Due to Kanoha's reputation, they approached Kanoha first. The journey from the Land of Fire to the Land of Flowers would take at least a week. It was uncertain if the Land of Flowers could hold out that long. Small nations were inherently weak and could barely maintain their own interests, let alone help others. The downfall of one small nation could benefit the others. The Land of Flowers had paid a hefty price to enlist Kanoha's help. Ryujiro, on this mission, wanted to assess Naruto's progress. Although his personality hadn't changed much, he remained rather silly. On the third day, the clear sky suddenly turned cloudy. Drip, drip. Soon, a torrential downpour began. Umbrella, where's the umbrella? Naruto rummaged through his backpack and finally found one. Just as he was about to hand it to Ryujiro, he froze. What's this? Why isn't the rain falling on you, Ryujiro? Naruto was shocked. The raindrops seemed to bounce off an invisible barrier around Ryujiro. It was merely a method of controlling spiritual pressure. Ryujiro's control wasn't perfect yet, and practicing advanced Kido required precise control of spiritual pressure. This was also a way to train his control. This is incredible. Ryujiro, can I learn this? Naruto's eyes sparkled with admiration. Not needing an umbrella to stay dry was too cool. No, you can't learn it. It's not ninjutsu, Ryujiro replied. Oh, it's not ninjutsu. Naruto was disappointed. He knew Ryujiro had many mysterious abilities, but this was really cool. Naruto, not yet mature, still had a childlike nature. He envied Ryujiro, who didn't need an umbrella the entire way. But why was he the one carrying everything? Ryujiro wasn't carrying anything at all. Damn, does Ryujiro see me as a pack mule? He thought bitterly. Outside the land of flowers, ninja corpses lay scattered. The rain had dyed the surroundings a crimson hue. The country's daimyo and others looked on in horror at the gathered rogue ninjas. The country had few ninjas left, being a small nation, they couldn't compare to the great nations. The Land of Flowers, a weak small nation, used to be an ally of the Land of Lightning, but their requests for help had been ignored by the latter. A month ago, the Land of Flowers had sent envoys with a plea for help to the daimyo of the Land of Lightning, but there had been no response. Damn Land of Lightning, so untrustworthy, thought the daimyo. They couldn't hold out for another week, especially with the rain affecting their defenses. The rogue ninjas were like a persistent plague, attacking and retreating to wear down their forces. The country had lost over 20 ninjas, including two jonin and several chunin. Initially, they tried to eliminate the rogue ninjas but were trapped in a valley set up by the rogues. In the rogue ninjas' base camp, they gathered in a small tent, drinking and celebrating. Boss, soon the land of flowers will be ours, one said. Following you is the best, we get to enjoy the spoils, another chimed in. Being ordered around in the village was unbearable, they grumbled. Each wore a forehead protector with a slashed symbol, marking them as rogue ninjas from different villages, expelled for various reasons. Keita, their leader from Kirigakur, had a menacing scar on his face. He basked in their admiration, feeling much better than when he was in Kirigakur. The Land of Flowers would soon be theirs. The rogue ninjas had set up camp at the border of the Land of Flowers. On one hand, this was to keep a distance from the Land of Flowers, and on the other, it was to intercept any ninjas who might come to aid the Land of Flowers. If ninjas from other villages really came to support the Land of Flowers, these rogue ninjas would be in trouble. There were a total of four camps set up around the area. Five miles away from the central camp, they had defenses in place, keeping an eye on the few roads that led to the Land of Flowers. When will this damn rain stop? A rogue ninja from the grass village spat, complaining. Who knows, the weather in the Land of Flowers is really bizarre and unpredictable. Suddenly, it starts raining heavily. Damn Land of Flowers, why do they resist? Their fall is only a matter of time. Following boss is much better than the days in the ninja villages. Keita was able to gather so many rogue ninjas partly because of his strength. It's no easy task to subdue these rogue ninjas. Hey, are those two figures over there? One person gazed into the distance and said. The grass ninja's expression changed, staring at the two vague figures. He quickly put out the cigarette dangling from his mouth. He grabbed a tube-like object and pulled the fuse hard. Whoosh! A blue signal flare exploded in the sky. Are those ninjas coming to support the Land of Flowers? Ryujiro and Naruto stopped in their tracks, 
looking at the two rogue ninjas. Hey, how is that guy keeping the rain from falling on him? Judging by that headband, they're from Kanoha. Kanoha really underestimates us, sending just two kids to the land of flowers. Aren't they just sending them to their deaths? Ryujiro sensed several presences rapidly approaching and spoke indifferently. Naruto, are you ready? Of course. All right then, I won't intervene. Let me see how much you have grown. Naruto smiled confidently. Ryujiro, just watch me. Hearing their conversation, the faces of the two rogue ninjas turned grim. Hey you two brats, there's a limit to underestimating other people. Forget it, they're just Kanoha ninjas. We're all rogue ninjas now. Why would we fear Kanoha? Kill these two brats. The grass ninja blocked his companion with a grim smile on his face. I'll handle this brat. The rogue ninja didn't object. After all, they were just two brats, nothing to worry about. The grass ninja drew his ninja sword, lifting it to split Naruto in two. Ding! Naruto pulled out a kunai, blocking the grass ninja's attack. What? This brat? Naruto smirked. Don't underestimate me. Multiple shadow clone jutsu. Bang bang bang. In an instant, over 20 Narutos appeared nearby. The grass ninja and the other rogue ninja were completely stunned. Hey hey hey. Is this a joke? Is he really a Kanoha ninja? This boy is just a genin. A genin? Let's attack together. Oh. The army of Naruto rushed forward like a tidal wave. Water style. Water dragon jutsu. A water dragon soared into the sky, instantly engulfing Naruto's shadow clones. Rogue ninjas from other guarding points also rushed over. What are you doing? It's just two brats. Why are you scared like this? Useless. Kanoha brats, huh? Just because you're Kanoha ninjas doesn't mean I won't kill you. My life was ruined by Kanoha. Kill them. Naruto's playful smile turned serious. He glanced back at Ryujiro, who had no intention of helping. Since that's the case, Ryujiro, let me show you my strength. Naruto used the multiple shadow clone jutsu again, this time creating hundreds of clones. Even the rogue ninjas were stunned. Was this kid really just a genin? So many shadow clones, how much chakra does he have? And that other guy, is he not going to fight? Damn brats, daring to underestimate us. Let's show them our strength. Ryujiro, watching the battle from the side, couldn't help but frown. Naruto's taijutsu was too weak. He's clearly relying on the sheer number of shadow clones to gain an advantage. Another key point. Naruto was too merciful to these people. The ninja world is a place where it's kill or be killed. Mercy to the enemy is cruelty to oneself. Has Jiraiya not taught Naruto this lesson yet? These people clearly want Naruto's life. Raisingan. One rogue ninja was hit by Naruto's Raisingan, sent flying, smashing trees in the process. Finally, Ryujiro has seen my strength. Idiot. What are you so smug about? Behind you. Naruto's face changed instantly upon hearing Ryujiro's voice. Damn it kid, you're too naive. Got you. A rogue ninja's sword descended. Naruto raised his hand to protect his head. In an instant, a white light pierced the rogue ninja's head. Ryujiro appeared beside Naruto with a flash, speaking coldly. Naruto, you have disappointed me. No matter when, you can never let your guard down against the enemy, and now you're too naive. This is how you should treat them. With a ruthless sword swing, a terrifying flying slash swept through, severing heads in an instant. The air was filled with the scent of blood. The ground turned red in an instant, blood rain fell, and the surrounding puddles turned into pools of blood. The remaining ninjas turned pale at the sight. What was that just now? A flying slash? Impossible. That Kanoha swordsman is so terrifying. Seeing Ryujiro's slash, the rogue ninjas were terrified out of their wits, losing all will to fight. They dropped their weapons and turned to flee without looking back. Ryujiro chuckled softly. Do you think you can escape? Hato number 73. Soren Sokatsui. Even without the incantation, the power of the twin lotus blue fire, crashed down in Ryujiro's hands was undiminished. Two crimson flames roared like fierce beasts, exploding with massive firelight and scorching heat that enveloped the area. Sizzle. The nearby pools of water evaporated completely, turning the entire region misty. The heat was unbearable for any human. They didn't even have the chance to react. This instantaneous attack to a ninjutsu without seals. There was no way they could respond. Under the searing flames, the rogue ninjas turned into charred remains, leaving behind a smell of burnt flesh mixed with the stench of blood in the air. Ryujiro merely frowned slightly at the sight, unfazed. However, Naruto was an exception. He knelt on the ground, hands supporting himself, as if he was about to vomit the bile from his stomach. Naruto had killed ninjas before, but he had never witnessed such a terrifying scene. Ryujiro, aren't you too cruel? 
Naruto's face was pale, and his voice trembled as he spoke. Ryujiro sneered, his disdainful tone unmasked. Cruel? Naruto, in the world of shinobis, there is no such word as cruel. It's either kill or be killed. You hesitated to kill these rogue ninjas just now? If I weren't here, you would have already died by their blades. Mercy towards the enemy is cruelty to yourself. If you continue with this mindset, you won't survive long on the battlefield. Naruto trembled all over, clenching his fists in unwillingness. Ryujiro, can't the conflicts in this world ever end? Why can't everyone live in peace? Ryujiro looked at Naruto calmly. Because we are human. Humans have emotions and desires. All disasters and misfortunes stem from these desires. Conflict is unavoidable. In Naruto's ideal world, he hoped for a world without wars, where everyone could coexist peacefully. But this was almost impossible. The great nations distrusted each other and could never truly cooperate, while the smaller nations had no choice but to seek protection from the great nations. And when the war would break out, the small nations would become the battlegrounds and get destroyed completely. Watching the hesitant Naruto, Ryujiro shook his head. Naruto's mindset had to change. While peace in this world wasn't impossible, it required Konoha to unify it. During the era of the first Hokage, Konoha had the potential to unify the entire shinobi world, but the first Hokage lacked the ambition. During his lifetime, the shinobi world had brief peace due to fear of his power. After his fall, the four great nations united to wage war against Konoha. Though Konoha emerged victorious, it suffered heavy casualties. War is brutal. The world must be unified, and only Konoha could achieve that. Ryujiro's eyes deepened as he gazed into the distance. In the tent, a rogue ninja covered in blood burst in. Boss, it's bad news. Konoha ninjas are here. Our comrades, they are all dead. The rogue ninjas who had been drinking in the tent were stunned, their smiles turning to expressions of fear. Even Keita's face showed a hint of dread. Konoha village. Even though Konoha's strength wasn't what it once was, it still held the title of the strongest ninja village. And Konoha ninjas arriving here so quickly was unexpected for them. Damn it, we should have broken through the defense line of the Land of Flowers a few days ago. How many Konoha ninjas are there? Two. What? Only two? Are they both Jonin? Keita glared at the rogue ninja, asking fiercely. The rogue ninja from Awagakure lowered his head and whispered, No, they're two brats. Bang. Keita threw his wine cup, realizing it was just two brats from Konoha. A bunch of idiots. Cowards. Scared by just some brats? Pathetic. I'll see how tough these Konoha brats really are. Keita shoved the rogue ninja to the ground. Everyone in the tent looked at the rogue ninja with disdain. Coward, scared by just some brats, the rogue ninja curled up, trembling with fear, mumbling, you don't understand. They're not ordinary kids. Keita and the rogue ninjas stepped out of the tent, their eyes shrinking to pinpoints at the sight. The camps they had set up were all destroyed. The air was thick with the smell of blood. Everywhere they looked, there were severed limbs and flesh. These people had all been cut down by a blade. Keita's gaze turned serious as he looked at the two figures. One of them was still a genin? TCH. A bunch of useless trash. Keita quickly formed hand seals, mobilizing a large amount of chakra. Water style. Water dragon jutsu. A massive water dragon formed behind him, much larger than usual, reflecting his jonin level chakra. The dragon's menacing head roared as it rushed towards Ryujiro and Naruto. Bakudo number 81. Danku a transparent barrier suddenly appeared before Ryujiro. The water dragon struck it and exploded, drenching the surroundings as if it were raining. What? My water dragon jutsu didn't work. Keita's expression changed. He gritted his teeth and formed more seals. Water style. Great waterfall jutsu. A torrent of water burst from Keita's mouth, flooding the area. Ryujiro remained unfazed. A reddish black slash erupted, cutting through the water torrent. The slash carried a suffocating aura, instilling fear and the threat of death in Keita and the rogue ninjas. It was infused with Ryujiro's conqueror's hockey. A flying slash. Could this guy be Kanoha's swordsmanship prodigy? Run. Keita didn't hesitate, shouting as he turned to flee. The rogue ninjas who failed to react were caught in the slash, torn to pieces. Keita glanced back, relieved that no one was pursuing him. But in the next moment, Ryujiro appeared before him in a flash step, swinging his blade down. Splat. A head flew off, blood spraying everywhere, rolling like a gourd on the ground. His eyes lost their light, filled with unwillingness. The rogue ninjas were all exterminated. Ha! Ryujiro you're truly amazing. That ninja was a jonin. Naruto looked at Ryujiro with an expression of pure admiration. 
Ryujiro sheathed his Zampakuto and gazed at the devastated land before him, taking a deep breath. Naruto, remember this. This world is a place where it's either you or your enemy who survives. Only immense power can give you real leverage. Small countries like the Land of Flowers have no real power, and they can only seek protection by relying on larger nations. The only way to achieve peace is through unification. Unification? At this point, Naruto's thoughts weren't that mature, but hearing these words still sent a shiver through his heart. What is this feeling? Unified ninja world? Was it really possible? The ninjas and daimyos on the high walls of the Land of Flowers, watching the commotion caused by the rogue ninja camp, were filled with fear in their eyes. What are these rogue ninjas up to now? Are they preparing for another wave of attacks? Lord Daimyo, someone is coming. The Daimyo shuddered upon hearing this. Stay alert. The Daimyo gritted his teeth, showing a look of unwillingness. Damn those rogue ninjas, are they coming again? No, it's not that. Lord Daimyo, it's the Kanoha ninjas. Kanoha reinforcements are here. What? Kanoha reinforcements? The Daimyo was first stunned, then cheered along with the ninjas around him. The land of flowers was finally saved. Everyone, follow me down to welcome them. Yes. The daimyo and a group of ninjas, along with the high-ranking officials of the land of flowers, all went to the border to welcome the Kanoha ninjas. But when they saw Ryujiro and Naruto, everyone was stunned. They were indeed Kanoha ninjas. But why were there only two kids? Did Kanoha really send just two kids to support them? What a joke. The daimyo and the high-ranking officials of the land of flowers looked around, seemingly trying to find other Kanoha ninjas. But it seemed that only these two kids from Kanoha had come to their aid the daimyo's face turned ugly. These big nations were too much. What's the use of sending two brats for reinforcement? These two brats were just here to die. How could these despicable big nations mock them like this? Lord daimyo, what should we do? The jonin beside him showed a bitter smile. Ah, let's settle these boys first. They probably don't even know the mission they're undertaking. The daimyo sighed helplessly, a look of misery on his face. The shinobi world was just like this, the strong prey on the weak. The jonin went out to welcome Ryujiro and Naruto, but his gaze suddenly fell on the object Ryujiro was holding. Instantly, the jonin froze, his eyes widening in horror at the blood-stained round object. Ryujiro, with a blank expression, tossed Keita's head over. Seeing the head roll on the ground, the jonin's face turned increasingly horrified. Was this for real? This head? The jonin rubbed his eyes in disbelief. After seeing clearly, he gasped. This is Keita's head. Could it be? He looked at Ryujiro in shock. The huge commotion earlier wasn't caused by the rogue ninjas, but by these two Kanoha ninjas. If Keita's head is here, then that means. Excuse me, those rogue ninjas? The jonin of the Land of Flowers asked nervously. Ryujiro responded calmly, The crisis in your country is over. All the rogue ninjas have been eradicated. The jonin covered his mouth, eyes wide with disbelief. Unbelievable! The rogue ninjas were taken out by two Kanoha ninjas, and one of them was a jonin. After reporting this, the high-ranking officials of the Land of Flowers were in an uproar. The daimyo personally arranged for Naruto and Ryujiro's food, clothing, and lodging, and sent ninjas to the former rogue ninja camp to confirm the situation. The news they received left the high-ranking officials of the Land of Flowers in shock. The rogue ninja camp was utterly destroyed, bodies and dismembered limbs scattered everywhere. The most terrifying sight was the land split in two, like a deep abyss, making anyone who looked at it from afar shiver in fear. It was unimaginable what had transpired there. Kanoha was worthy of being the strongest ninja village. Even after facing so many wars, their strength remained unfathomable. The reward for this mission was a whopping 500,000 Ryo. Naruto, who had never seen so much money in his life, almost had his eyes pop out at the sight of the treasure chest. For Ryujiro, money was just a worldly possession, in the face of disaster or war, it would be useless. After staying in the Land of Flowers for a few days, Ryujiro and Naruto prepared to return to Kanoha with the treasures provided by the Land of Flowers. The daimyo watched Ryujiro and Naruto depart and slowly said to his subordinate, Contact the high officials of the Land of Fire. We will officially request to become an ally of the Land of Fire. Since the Land of Lightning was unwilling to help, what was the point of keeping their agreement with them? To the Land of Lightning, the Land of Flowers was just a small insect, insignificant. They might as well seek Kanoha's protection. Lord Daimyo, won't this offend the Land of Lightning? Oomph. The Land of Lightning has no credibility. If a disaster befalls the Land of Flowers, do you think they will send someone to protect us? At least Kanoha has a reliable reputation in the shinobi world. If it weren't for these two Kanoha ninjas, our country would be. The subordinate understood and responded. 
then started preparing the documents for the land of fire. Money, money, so much money. Naruto hugged the treasure chest, turning into a little money grubber, rubbing his face against it. Ryujiro looked on helplessly. Doesn't Naruto seem like he's never seen money before? The overall strength of the land of flowers was average, with few ninjas in the village. No wonder they were troubled by a group of rogue ninjas. But wasn't the land of flowers an ally of the land of lightning? Why was there no response from the land of lightning? Just as Ryujiro finished pondering, several figures blocked the path of Ryujiro and Naruto. Judging by their headbands, they were cloud ninjas. How come there are Konoha ninjas here? Hey you two brats, stop right there. The land of lightning truly lived up to its reputation for being slow. The situation was already resolved by the time their reinforcements arrived. TCH, they don't think much of us, do they? These two Konoha brats must be here to reinforce the land of flower. But, it's all irrelevant now. It seems the crisis in the land of flower has been resolved by these two ninjas from Konoha. As for the treasures of the land of flower, they're just two brats. Killing them here would mean completing their mission, wouldn't it? Ryujiro, this is not good. Naruto looked at these cloud ninjas with a very unpleasant expression. Naruto, come here, Ryujiro said calmly. Naruto cautiously walked over to Ryujiro's side, and Ryujiro handed him a rope. The next second, Ryujiro's figure suddenly vanished. The group of cloud ninjas involuntarily shuddered for some reason, an extreme cold enveloping them. Before the cloud ninjas could understand what had happened, one of their comrades suddenly fell to the ground. His upper and lower body severed at the waist. Blood spurted out in every direction, and many internal organs were scattered all around. What was that just now? Satoru stared blankly at his fallen comrade, his mind completely blank. Body flicker jutsu? No, that's not it. That wasn't the body flicker jutsu. This speed surpasses it. This Kanoha Shinobi. Be on alert. The previously aggressive cloud ninjas fell into disarray due to the death of their comrade, fearfully scanning their surroundings for any sign of Ryujiro. Damn it. Where is he? If they couldn't find this brat, they would go after the blonde boy instead. He didn't believe the other boy was equally powerful. You too, go capture that brat for me. Yes. Two cloud chunin leapt into the air, and just as their kanai flew out, there was a sudden clinking sound. Accompanied by sparks, the kanai shattered into pieces and fell to the ground. Whoosh! Ryujiro's figure suddenly appeared before the two, and with a simple slash, the two cloud chunin fell without any resistance. Boom! Suddenly, a massive spiritual pressure erupted from Ryujiro's body. With just a simple swing of his sword, the spiritual pressure transformed into a terrifying shockwave, a blinding white light engulfing everything like a tidal wave. The overwhelming energy instantly annihilated the surrounding vegetation and land. What kind of power is this? Satoru, with his last conscious thought, stared in despair at the blinding white scene before him. His body was gradually torn apart, and under this immense energy, he didn't even feel pain. The ground kept trembling, the shockwave raising a massive cloud of dust and altering the surrounding terrain. The deep fissure resembled a gorge, just a group of cloud ninjas. What were they jumping around in front of him for? However, this feeling, Ryujiro sensed a change in his spiritual pressure and chakra, and at this moment, a trail of blood appeared in his eyes. As he opened his eyes again, those blood-red Sharingan were eerily sinister. The Hogyoku was restless, the land of lightning, Cloud Village, a burly figure with terrifying strength granted by his bulging muscles, stood before a cold corpse. The atmosphere was gradually solidifying, and the surrounding cloud ninjas couldn't help but shiver under the fourth rakage's icy killing intent. What happened to Darui's team? He was the most trusted subordinate of Rakage. When they found Darui, he was already dead. Looking at Darui's withered body at his feet, A's eyes were filled with endless rage. Who did this? Who dared to attack one of my cloud village's jonin? A's furious roar echoed throughout the office. The suffocating aura he emitted made it hard to breathe. However, the strangest thing was that the kunais embedded in Darui's body were all cloud ninja's weapons but all the cloud ninja corpses were found with Darui. Could the culprit be trying to fabricate a story of internal strife among the cloud ninjas? This trick was too naive. At this moment, no one dared to provoke the furious rakage, because they knew that the rakage was like a ticking time bomb, and saying the wrong thing now could cost them their lives. This time, the entire land of lightning might be shaken. Darui was practically the rakage's right-hand man. His task was merely to search for the one-tailed Jinchuriki. With Darui's strength and his team, even if they couldn't defeat the one tail, they shouldn't have died at its hands. The key issue was these wounds. Besides Derui's, 
The wounds on the other ninjas were very sharp. It was clear that the culprit who killed these cloud ninjas was a master swordsman, and their strength was terrifying, at least not something an ordinary jonin could handle. A swordsman. There are many swordsmen in the shinobi world, but one with such exquisite swordsmanship is definitely not a commoner. Lord Rakage, if the culprit is a swordsman, then I might have an idea who it was. Kanoha's Hokage assistant is also a swordsmanship genius. Moreover, recently we have lost contact with our ninjas at the border of the Land of Fire. Could it be? A's eyes flashed with a cold light. Could it be Kanoha? Maboi, contact the fifth Hokage of Kanoha and tell her I want to visit the Leaf Village. A gritted his teeth and emphasized the last few words. Land of Fire, Kanoha Gakur. Upon receiving a call from I, Tsunade immediately convened a meeting with Kanoha higher up. What do you all think about the Rakage visiting Kanoha? Hamira frowned. The Rakage isn't someone to mess with. Why are the Cloud Shinobi visiting Kanoha anyway? They're not here with good intentions, Koharu added. Despite her disagreements with Tsunade over recent matters, she knew this was a serious issue concerning the Hokage, so she set aside her grievances. Tsunade, has there been any recent friction between our village and the Cloud Village? Or any missions that might have caused conflicts with them? Missions, huh? There might be a chance of conflict with the Cloud Shinobi over an A-rank mission in the Land of Flowers. A mission in the Land of Flowers? Isn't the Land of Flowers allied with the Land of Lightning? Why would they commission a mission from the Land of Fire? Who took on the mission in the Land of Flowers? Ryujiro, what? Both the elders were stunned. Ryujiro, an assistant to the Hokage, personally took on a mission? Shouldn't an assistant to the Hokage be by the Hokage's side? Tsunade, you're being too lenient with Ryujiro. He's the Hokage's assistant. Tsunade scoffed. Do you want him to stay in the umbu instead? He'd turn the umbu upside down. Recently, Danzo has been keeping a low profile, and all his root members have been absorbed into the umbu. Of course, Tsunade wasn't entirely at ease with the root members. Some of them had been brainwashed by Danzo. On the surface, they seemed loyal to the Hokage, but in reality, they were still aligned with Danzo. However, as long as Ryujiro was in Kanoha, even Danzo couldn't stir up too much trouble. Tsunade had plans to sit as Hokage for a few more years and then pass the position to Ryujiro. However, Ryujiro wasn't interested at all, thinking the position of Hokage was a hassle. Although Tsunade shared the same sentiment, every young ninja in the village fought for the position of Hokage. This kid is truly unique. Has Ryujiro returned to the village? Koharu asked. Tsunade shook her head. We haven't received any news about Ryujiro and Naruto returning yet. Koharu rubbed her temples in frustration. Ever since Tsunade took the position, their roles as Hokage advisors had become almost ceremonial. Tsunade's special status made it difficult for them to exert pressure on her. An assistant to the Hokage taking the Nine Tails Jinchuriki on a mission. Tsunade you have a big heart. With the rakage coming to Kanoha, all the higher-ups were on edge. If this news got out, other major nations would focus their attention on Kanoha. It could very well lead to the possibility of war. Ding ding ding. Three figures clashed in the desert, each collision stirring up a massive sandstorm. With a detached gaze, Kimimaro wielded his Zampakuto effortlessly against Sasuke and Gara. Kimimaro was becoming increasingly proficient with his newly acquired powers. Sand drizzle. Whiz whiz whiz. Sharp sand bullets rained down on Kimimaro's head, and Gara's sand also bound his feet. Clang clang clang. The sand bullets hit Kimimaro without causing any damage. With his steel skin, the sand bullets had no effect on him. TCH, Gara clicked his tongue in frustration. Can't even break through his defense. Was this even a human body? Kimimaro exerted his strength and easily broke free from the sand bindings. Just then, Sasuke appeared behind Kimimaro. Chidori, blue lightning crackled in Sasuke's right hand, producing a sound like a thousand birds chirping. In his cursed seal state, Sasuke's power was on par with a jonin. Chidori, an A-rank jutsu, enhanced by the Cursed Seal's Black Lightning, was enough to make any Juin wary. However, Kimimaro had already anticipated Sasuke's attack. He could have easily dodged Sasuke's strike, but Kimimaro extended a hand. Bang! Z z z z z z z z z. Sasuke's face changed drastically, exclaiming in shock, How is this possible? He blocked Chidori with his hand. Is he still human? Ah! Uh. Before Sasuke could react, Kimimaro grabbed his wrist, and threw him several hundred meters away. Excellent. This power is incredible. From the start, Kimimaro had asked Gara and Sasuke to use their full strength against him. For him it was hard to imagine the power Ryujiro possessed. In such a short time, Ryujiro granted him such power. A god? 
Kimimaro once believed Ryujiro was like a god, akin to the Sage of Six Paths. To be reborn and gain such power, it was beyond what any jutsu could achieve. Bah! From a distance, Sasuke climbed out of a sand dune, a look of frustration on his face. Damn it! No way! I have no way to fight back at all. If he had such power, would he be able to kill Itachi? But, but Ryujiro wouldn't let him become like Kimimaro. I am too weak. Sasuke clenched his fist. You promised to help me gain power. Ryujiro, you liar. Kimimaro looked at Gara and smiled. Want to continue? Gara shook his head and spread his hands. No, regardless of what we do, we can't beat you. Continuing this would be pointless. This is a meaningless battle. Kimimaro smiled at Gara. If I'm not mistaken, you're hiding your true strength, right? Gara trembled, looking at Kimimaro in surprise. He even noticed that. Sort of. Then why not use your full strength? Gara pointed at Sasuke walking towards them. You want to crush his spirit? Kimimaro scratched his chin thoughtfully and then glanced at Sasuke. Seems so. Not sure why Ryujiro likes to push Sasuke so much. I heard the Sharingan evolves with strong emotions. Does Ryujiro want Sasuke's Sharingan to evolve? Feeling his own weakness, Sasuke walked over with a gloomy expression. At that moment, he recalled everything that happened on the night of the massacre and the embarrassing events while challenging Ryujiro. Weak. He was too weak. Intense emotions surged through Sasuke's mind. Kimimaro noticed the change in Sasuke's chakra and focused on his eyes. Oh. Kimimaro looked at Sasuke's eyes with interest. Sasuke's Sharingan now had one more Tomo compared to before. The three Tomo Sharingan. After Ryujiro and Naruto completed their mission and returned back, many villagers couldn't take their eyes off the boxes on the cart. Ryujiro, how are we going to divide this money? Naruto asked eagerly. Ryujiro glanced at Naruto and pulled out a few wrinkled bills from his pocket. Here you go. Huh. Naruto's eyes widened in disbelief. Ryujiro, are you kidding me? That much bounty, and you're giving me just this bit of money? You're too stingy. Ryujiro looked at Naruto indifferently. If you say one more word, I won't even give you this. Naruto immediately deflated, begrudgingly accepting the wrinkled bills while inwardly cursing Ryujiro. Hey! A familiar voice called out. Naruto, I've been looking all over for you. Naruto's face lit up with joy. Pervy Sage, Jiraiya smiled at Naruto and Ryujiro. Ryujiro nodded slightly at Jiraiya. Ryujiro, Tsunade is looking for you. Once you've dealt with this, head to the Hokage's office. Tsunade looking for me? Is she going to make me handle more paperwork? Naruto had wanted to complain to Jiraiya about Ryujiro's stinginess but was dragged away by Jiraiya before he could react. Watching Naruto struggle in the distance, Ryujiro shook his head helplessly. After parking the cart at the Hyuga residence, all the Hyuga clan members looked at Ryujiro with curiosity. Ryujiro-sama? What's all this? These are the treasures from the Land of Flowers. Move them to my room, Ryujiro instructed calmly. Yes sir, Ryujiro didn't care about the rest. Whether the Hyuga clan members would be tempted to steal was up to their courage. Though not a Hyuga by blood, Ryujiro's status within the Hyuga clan had increased a lot. Hinata isn't here? Ryujiro asked as he opened the door to the dojo, finding it empty. Brother Ryujiro, sister is out on a mission, came a petite and delicate voice beside him. Ryujiro smiled faintly. It's you, Hanabi. Did you rob the land of flowers? You brought back so many treasures, Hanabi teased. Ryujiro's face darkened. What nonsense. Do I look like someone who would do that? Hanabi giggled. I'm just kidding, brother. Father is looking for you. Could you go see him? Hayashi-sama is looking for me? Guided by Hanabi, Ryujiro entered a room. She respectfully announced, Father, I brought big brother Ryujiro. Thank you, Hanabi. You may go, Hayashi said. Hanabi closed the door and left. Ryujiro sat down and asked, Hayashi-sama, what's the matter? Hayashi looked at Ryujiro and said slowly, The fourth rakage of the Hidden Cloud Village contacted the Hokage a few days ago. He wants to visit the Hidden Leaf Village. Did you have any conflict with the Hidden Cloud during your mission in the Land of Flowers? A visit from the rakage, especially that hot-headed guy, likely spells trouble. Yes, Ryujiro answered frankly. Hayashi's face changed slightly, and he sighed. I knew it. So, did they die? Ryujiro nodded. Yes, Hayashi's heart skipped a beat. Dead? No wonder the rakage was coming. He must be looking to settle this. In reality, Hayashi misunderstood. If the rakage knew who had died, his reaction would be more intense. Although every village values its elite jonin, it wouldn't warrant such a grand reaction unless it was someone like Darui. If they knew Darui was dead, it could spark a war between the two nations. Jonin, huh? Would the hidden cloud demand Kanoha hand over Ryujiro, 
Similar to their past threats against the Hyuga clan, Hayashi harbored no goodwill towards the Hidden Cloud or the Land of Lightning. The incident where Hinata was kidnapped had been orchestrated by them, and they never admitted their wrongdoing, instead using it to pressure Konoha and the Hyuga clan. If the Land of Lightning really made such a demand, the fifth Hokage wouldn't agree. Ryujiro was the Hokage's assistant. Handing him over would make Konoha a laughingstock. Seeing Hayashi's troubled expression, Ryujiro fell into deep thought. The Rakage wants to visit Konoha? Thinking of the muscular man whose destructive power was akin to a human-tailed beast, Ryujiro realized that the news from the Land of Flowers might not have reached the Land of Lightning yet. Perhaps the Rakage's visit wasn't because of that. Dare we? Ha yeah, maybe. But even if they knew, so what? If they want to start a war with Konoha, Ryujiro would welcome it. Leaving the Hyuga residence, Ryujiro headed to the Hokage's office. Besides Tsunade, Koharu and Hamura, the two Hokage advisors, were also waiting for him. Ryujiro, as the Hokage's assistant, you should be helping the Hokage manage village affairs, not causing trouble by taking the Nine Tails Jinchuriki on missions, Koharu scolded. After the sand incident, Konoha hasn't recovered, and now you've caused more trouble. Koharu glared at Ryujiro with a deep look. Koharu, Hamura tugged at her sleeve. Now wasn't the time to antagonize Ryujiro. Ryujiro gazed at Koharu with a haunting look. Trouble? Just because the rakage is coming, you consider it trouble? Heh, Konoha's decline from being the strongest village is partly due to people like you. What do you mean by that? Koharu snapped, glaring at Ryujiro. Ryujiro disdainfully looked at Koharu. If not for him and Tsunade, Koharu might have already compromised with the sand. Despite Konoha being in the right, Koharu's fear of war made her grovel. Enough. Advisors, please leave. I need to speak with Ryujiro alone, Tsunade ordered, clearly displeased with Koharu. Koharu, Tsunade's icy gaze made both advisors pause. Koharu gritted her teeth and left in a huff. Hamura sighed helplessly and followed. Tsunade rubbed her temples, feeling a headache coming on. Ryujiro, no matter what, they are still village elders. You should at least be polite to them, Tsunade said with a hint of resignation in her tone. Ryujiro found a seat and sat down, crossing his legs. Just because they are old, I should be polite to them? If they are merely relying on their age for respect, they might as well retire from their positions as Hokage advisors. Ryujiro spoke mercilessly. Sai, the village that my grandfather built with his own hands has ended up like this, Tsunade said, sitting down beside Ryujiro. As Ryujiro glanced over, his eyes couldn't help but notice the massive peaks of Tsunade's bosom. Are they really that bouncy? Ryujiro quickly averted his gaze. This woman was indeed formidable, Ryujiro thought. What do you think about the rakage visiting Konoha? Tsunade asked Ryujiro. What else can I think? Since he is here to visit Konoha, we should receive him with the hospitality of a guest. If he's here to cause trouble, then Konoha will stand its ground. Tsunade glared at Ryujiro. You say that so easily. This is the rakage we're talking about. In his youth, he once broke the left horn of the eight tails. That old hag wasn't wrong either. The current Konoha can't withstand much turmoil. This was what gave Tsunade a headache. Being Hokage was incredibly troublesome. She would have preferred to spend her life gambling in the casinos. Ever since becoming Hokage, she hadn't visited a casino for several days, and it was driving her crazy. It's just the rakage, Ryujiro said nonchalantly. No need to worry too much, Granny. As long as I'm here, nothing will go wrong in Konoha. Tsunade's face grew rigid and gradually darkened. Who are you calling Granny, you brat? Ryujiro glanced at Tsunade. Now that I think given your age, you're more like an ant than a granny. Tsunade's patience had its limits, and she punched Ryujiro out of nowhere. With a loud bang, like the roar of a cannon Tsunade's punch made the entire Hokage's office shake. However, Ryujiro didn't dodge. Tsunade's punch seemed to hit something hard. Looking at the transparent barrier before her, Tsunade frowned and asked, What is this, kid? A defense wall, Ryujiro replied. Defense wall? Was it a ninjutsu? But this kid didn't form any hand seals. This brat has so many strange abilities, Tsunade thought. Forget it. Since you've said it like that, when the rakage arrives, stay by my side. I want to see what his real purpose is. What other purpose could there be? He's probably here to question us. Ryujiro thought to himself. Ryujiro returned home and entered his spiritual space. So Sosuke Aizen. The most charismatic villain of Bleach, Aizen was cunning and incredibly powerful, one of the most beloved villains in the series. Ryujiro always felt Aizen's end was too abrupt, much like how Ichigo mentioned in the original anime whether Aizen might have longed to lose his powers. Standing above all others is lonely. From birth, Aizen saw himself as superior to everyone else, unmatched by anyone. 
Such invincibility is a path to solitude. If Aizen's template reached 100%, would Aizen be also summoned? Forget it, no point in overthinking. Fighting against such a character was also great training. For three days and nights, Ryujiro stayed in his spiritual world, while outside, many people gathered around his bed, their eyes filled with worry. Especially Hinata, whose hands were tightly clasped together. Boom! In that instant, everyone felt a heavy pressure, not just in Ryujiro's room but throughout the entire Kanoha. Inside the room, Kakashi, Gai and others almost fell to their knees. What is this pressure? Is it coming from Ryujiro? What an overwhelming force, it feels like our souls are trembling. The spiritual pressure emanating from Ryujiro was heavier than ever, indicating that his power had increased once again. Hinata looked at Ryujiro with worry. Ryujiro-kun. The next moment, Ryujiro opened his eyes, the excitement and passion for battle still burning within them. As expected of Aizen, only a spiritual projection of him could give Ryujiro this feeling of having met a worthy opponent. Huh. Why are you all here? Ryujiro finally noticed the many people gathered in his room. Hinata immediately threw herself into Ryujiro's arms. Ryujiro-kun. Hearing the girl's tearful voice, Ryujiro felt a pang of heartache. Ino and Sakura looked on enviously. They envied Hinata, wishing they too could have someone like Ryujiro. Ryujiro, what was that pressure that you just released? Kakashi asked seriously. Ryujiro frowned. Pressure? Is Kakashi referring to spiritual pressure? Could it be that the spiritual pressure got out of control? Just one of my special ability, Ryujiro said lightly. Another ability? Just how many tricks does Ryujiro have up his sleeve? Even though Ryujiro was from Kanoha, he still made Kakashi feel uneasy. Ryujiro Koen, you've been sleeping here for three days and nights, Hinata said, her eyes slightly red as she looked up at Ryujiro. Three days and nights? Ryujiro was taken aback. Had he been fighting Aizen in his spiritual space for three days already? No wonder these people looked so worried. Ryujiro patted Hinata's head. Don't worry Hinata, I'm fine. Everyone I'm sorry, I got you all worried for nothing. Now you can all go home and relax. I'm okay. Aside from Kakashi, who gave Ryujiro a deep look, the others said a few words to Ryujiro before leaving. Ryujiro looked tenderly at Hinata, pulling her into his arms and gently said, I'm sorry Hinata, I made you worry so much. Ryujiro Kuen, you meditated for too long this time. I was very worried about you. Tears still stained Hinata's eyes, and Ryujiro wiped them away. It was a bit long this time, but I gained a lot from it. Next time, I won't make you worry. Yes, Hinata softly replied, enjoying the brief, beautiful moment. Aside from the rakage's impending visit to Kanoha, there was another significant event in the hidden sand village. The position of Kazakage couldn't remain vacant for long, especially after the village's Jinchuriki of the one tail defected, making the situation in the sand village unstable. Someone needed to take the position of Kazakage to stabilize the current situation. After persuasion from the high-ranking officials of the Sand Village and the Land of Wind, Chio finally agreed to take up the position of the fifth Kazakage. When the news of Chio becoming the fifth Kazakage reached Kanoha, even Ryujiro was surprised. It was unexpected that the old woman would become the fifth Kazakage. It seemed the Sand Village had truly run out of capable candidate. Chio is appointed as the fifth Kazakage. How interesting! Doesn't Sunagake your fear that this old geezer might kick the bucket after a few years in office? Ryujiro sneered. Among the five great shinobi villages, Sunagakir was the weakest. Honestly, Ryujiro didn't understand why Sunagakir was one of the five great shinobi villages. Was it because its overall national strength was stronger than the other small countries? Not only was the environment in Sunagakir harsh, but the number of capable individuals in the village was also extremely low. At this time, to stabilize the situation in Sunagakir, they actually nominated an almost dead person as the Kazakage. Speaking of which, Sunagakir's compensation should soon be sent to Kanoha. This time, Sunagakir's compensation was like a massive hemorrhage. Within Sunagakir, there were voices of opposition, but what good was it to oppose? Did they have the qualification to negotiate with Kanoha? The reason Sunagakir dared to negotiate with Kanoha was because they had seen the previous Kanoha leadership's weakness. But now, with Tsunade and Ryujiro as the strong figures in Kanoha, thinking of reaping benefits in Kanoha? That's just wishful thinking. The news of the Rakage's visit to Kanoha attracted great attention from the Land of Earth and the Land of Wind, while the Land of Water was still guarding its own territory without any movements. Why was the Rakage visiting Kanoha? This was something all the major nations wanted to know. Kanoha and Kumogakure were almost sworn enemies. Visiting Kanoha at such a special time made it hard to fathom. 
Akatsuki had also been noticed by the Five Great Shinobi Villages, an organization that captured tailed beasts naturally attracted the high attention of the Five Great Nations. Tailed beasts were war machines that could influence the balance of the shinobi world, and now Sonigakir was worried that Gara might encounter the Akatsuki that captured tailed beasts. If that was really the case, the strength of the Land of Wind would once again be greatly weakened. In that case, they would have no way to argue with the other great nations. About three days later, the Rakage had already arrived within the territory of the Land of Fire. Tsunade also held another high-level meeting to respond to the Rakage's visit. The Umbu were also constantly monitoring the movements of the Rakage in the village to prevent any unexpected situations from arising. At this high-level meeting, Ryujiro was again absent. Koharu was initially displeased and wanted to argue with Tsunade, but was eventually stopped by Tsunade's strong stance. Hayashi Hyuga also sighed helplessly in his heart. Although Tsunade's actions were somewhat inappropriate, Kanoha finally had a strong Hokage. At the same time, in the former root base, in the dark and empty surroundings, Danzo sat alone in the base, his eyes faintly gazing at a spot, seemingly waiting for someone to arrive. Buzz, the surrounding space suddenly twisted into a vortex, and a black dot and a figure appeared in front of Danzo. Achiha Abito. Even Ryujiro would be surprised to see Danzo in contact with Abito. Next, let's have a good talk. As the red light in Abito's eyes flared up, the temperature in the entire base dropped. Even though Danzo was willing to cooperate with Abito, he did not let down his guard. After all, the person before him was the legendary Achiha Madara. Although it was unclear whether it was true or false, those eyes were undoubtedly Mangekyo Sharingan. Tsunade, you have been creating so many problems for me, so now don't blame me for being unrighteous. Although the Umbu Ninja monitored Danzo, they would not enter the base. They only guarded the entrance. As for what happened inside, none of them knew. Ryujiro was not far from the root base at this moment. Just as he was about to leave, he suddenly sensed a special presence with his observation hockey and paused. This aura, it's Abito. And Danzo, hey, what are these two up to now? Danzo, it seems you are indeed desperate enough to seek contact with someone like Abito. The position of Hokage is surely not suitable for someone like you. In fact, when Tsunade disbanded Root, Ryujiro had anticipated that Danzo might be driven to desperation by Tsunade and do something reckless. Collaborating with Abito, was Danzo planning to manipulate things during Pain's invasion of Kanoha? Although Ryujiro knew that Danzo and Abito were in contact, he did not intend to stop it. He wanted to see what Danzo was planning. A day later, the Rakage arrived in Kanoha. The entire Kanoha village seemed to be under a heavy atmosphere, because the Rakage brought a coffin. Akage bringing a coffin to Kanoha, such a move was inevitably intriguing. At this time, in the reception hall of the Hokage's office, Tsunade's face was extremely ugly as she looked at the coffin in front of her and asked gloomily, Rakage, what is the meaning of this? There was no expression on A's face. He glanced at Maboi and said, Maboi, open the coffin. Rakage, don't go too far. Tsunade's angry roar echoed throughout the room, creating an atmosphere that felt like it could explode at any moment. Rakage visiting Kanoha was one thing, but bringing a coffin, what did that mean? Kakashi frowned on the side, having a bad premonition. When the coffin was opened, the faces of everyone on Kanoha's side changed. The person lying in the coffin was, it was Darui, also known as the right-hand man of the Rakage. There were very few people in the shinobi world who didn't know Darui. Moreover, Darui was the Rakage's most loyal subordinate. Such a person was lying in a cold coffin. Thud. At the sight of the corpse, Tsunade's heart skipped a beat. The wounds looked like they were inflicted by a sword. Could it have been that brat Ryujiro? At this moment, Ryujiro was still leisurely making his way over. Tsunade felt uncertain, but as the Hokage, she couldn't show any weakness at this moment. Rakage, what is the meaning of this? Tsunade asked gloomily. The Rakage didn't speak. Instead, his secretary explained the whole incident. By the time Mabui finished, the faces of Kanoha's people were grim. Rakage, aren't you going too far? Just because of the wounds, you suspect our Kanoha's Hokage assistant. Do you think we would punish one of our shinobi just because of your suspicion? With that, Tsunade's aura burst forth. Even A was somewhat surprised. Initially, he had some disdain for the fact that Kanoha's fifth Hokage was a woman. But now it seemed that this woman was not simple. Across his arms, a cold glint flashing in his eyes. Let's not mention this for now, but how do you explain the incident in the Land of Flowers? Their Kumogakure lost a Genin, a Chunin, and a Jonin. Don't tell me this had nothing to do with Kanoha. Tsunade was speechless for a moment, and just then, 
a young figure pushed the door open and appeared before everyone. The young man glanced at the wreckage and said indifferently, I am the one who killed them, Ryujiro? Everyone's eyes suddenly focused on Ryujiro. The expressions of everyone on the Kanoha side turned extremely horrified. Was Ryujiro the one who killed them? The key point was that even if it was Ryujiro who killed the person, why did he just directly admit it? Even Tsunade's mind was buzzing and blank at this moment. What the hell was this brat doing? Koharu was trembling with rage, her gaze towards Ryujiro filled with resentment. As expected, Ryujiro staying in Kanoha is nothing but a curse. He will bring disaster to Kanoha. At this moment, Koharu had already forgotten about Ryujiro saving Kanoha. Now, she only felt anger and hatred towards Ryujiro. The ninjas from the Hidden Cloud Village couldn't help but look at Ryujiro. A, the fourth Rakage, squinted his eyes and looked at Ryujiro. So this was Kanoha's genius swordsman? Hokage's assistant. What a joke, that's all he amounts to. A's lips curled into a mocking smile. It seems that Kanoha has really declined to this extent. The once number one ninja village in the world has fallen to such a state. Did this brat really have the strength to defeat the one tail? A didn't think so. Although the harmless smile on this brat's face gave people a creepy feeling to him, Ryujiro looked like nothing more than a weak scholar. The rumors of Kanoha's genius only came from Kanoha. As for Sunagakir, it's just the weakest ninja village, and to be honest, Rakage didn't take Sunagakir seriously at all. Such a ninja village's words lacked credibility. Not to mention that now the fifth Kazakage was an old woman with one foot in the grave. If Sunagakir's environment wasn't so harsh and lacked plunderable value, several major villages would have already launched wars against it. Not bad for a genius. Kid, just for your attitude, I recognize you. But you owe me an explanation for the death of Cloud Ninjas. A's deep eyes fixed on Ryujiro. Ryujiro smiled faintly. What is there to explain? It was your village ninjas who wanted to attack me first, and I just killed them in my self-defense. Your village is one of the five great shinobi villages and yet when your ally, the Land of Flowers, held out for a week without reinforcements from you, they had no choice but to ask for help from Kanoha. Where is your credibility as a great shinobi village? The Cloud Ninjas saw the treasures from the Land of Flowers and got greedy. So, they attacked me, I just took action to protect myself. The hall suddenly became much quieter, and everyone looked at Ryujiro in shock. Even Tsunade hadn't expected that Ryujiro could be so articulate. However, it's just his side of the story. There's no way the Cloud Village would let it go just like that. Rakage personally came, surely wanting to take something from Kanoha. This kid might provoke the Rakage. At this moment, A's face had turned extremely dark, and he looked at Ryujiro with a face as black as coal. His ferocious gaze gave the impression of a fierce beast. A gritted his teeth, you brat, what do you take Cloud Village for? Do you think we will get scared of you? You're deliberately slandering us. Slandering? Ryujiro sneered disdainfully. Why would I slander your village for no reason? There's no evidence left anyway. Just say what you want from the start, so we don't waste each other's time. If you want to start a war, Kanoha will be ready to accompany you to the end. Tsunade's face suddenly changed drastically. Hey, Ryujiro, wars are not something to be spoken of lightly. Even Kakashi and Might Guy looked at Ryujiro with different eyes. Sure enough, he was still too young and impulsive. However, if he wasn't impulsive, they would find it strange. At this moment, Kakashi's guard against Ryujiro relaxed significantly. I was stunned for a moment, then sneered. Tsunade, is he the Hokage, or are you the Hokage? I feel like your Hokage assistant doesn't really seem like an assistant. Tsunade pulled Ryujiro aside and whispered, Brat, what are you up to? War is not something to be mentioned lightly. Cloud Village is not sand. They won't be scared off by mere threats. Ryujiro looked at Tsunade and said slowly, Tsunade, it's time for Kanoha to change. It's time for the shinobi world to know that the title of the strongest village still belongs to Kanoha. As long as I'm here, Kanoha will always be the strongest village. You, Tsunade stared blankly at the young man in front of her, his eyes revealing confidence and a gaze that seemed to look down on everyone. This brat, is he serious? Should I choose to believe him? Tsunade hesitated. As the leader of a village, she couldn't make decisions lightly, especially regarding war, which she had experienced before. If war breaks out, it would be a disaster for the people of Kanoha. But looking at Ryujiro, she couldn't help but feel a strange sense of reassurance. Rakage, what is your purpose in coming to Kanoha this time? Tsunade's eyes darkened as she looked at A. A grinned with a sinister smile. I want this brat to come to the Land of Lightning with me. That's impossible. Tsunade flatly refused. 
Ryujiro is Kanoha's Hokage assistant. There's no way he would be allowed to go to the Land of Lightning at will. Besides, once he goes to the Land of Lightning, Ryujiro would be at their mercy. A's eyes were still cold, threatening, Okage, are you protecting this boy? This is not protection. Ryujiro is right. Who knows if your village ninjas attacked him first? Let's not talk about that for now. Bringing a coffin to Kanoha is already an offense. What does Derui's death have to do with Kanoha? By judging it on the basis of injuries alone, you're being too ridiculous. Tsunade's toughness surprised A. She was different from the previous Hokage, who was a weak-willed old man. Sure enough, he was getting a little anxious. A originally came here to make a fuss over the issue and take advantage of this situation, as Derui's death was still not completely clear. So, are you saying Kanoha wants to start a war? A's domineering aura erupted, making the atmosphere in the hall extremely oppressive. Start a war. Ryujiro stepped forward, sneering. Do you think your village is powerful enough to win a war against Kanoha? Cloud Village, powerful enough? Everyone was stunned. Even the people from Cloud Village were left speechless. Did they hear it wrong? I was taken aback. Was this still the same weak Kanoha he knew? To be honest, A had long dismissed Kanoha from his mind. The once great Hidden Leaf Village was now a shadow of its former self, while Cloud Village had become the strongest ninja village in the world. I had come to Kanoha to make trouble, with ninja lurking at Kanoha's borders and his own squad sent on missions. He couldn't let Derui's death at Ryujiro's hands go unanswered. Even though there was no evidence to prove Kanoha's involvement, Ryujiro had admitted to killing a cloud's jonin. That was enough to provoke Kanoha. I had planned to take a chunk out of Kanoha, but the situation was now beyond his expectations. Ryujiro, what are you saying? Rakage sama Ryujiro might be ill and speaking nonsense. Please forgive him, Kakashi hurriedly explained. This was the Rakage. If this situation wasn't handled properly, it could indeed lead to war. Kakashi, Ryujiro is perfectly fine. His words are as good as mine. He is right. Your village is not even strong enough to stand against Kanoha. Based on unfounded accusations, you bring a coffin to provoke Kanoha. Is this how you make decisions in your village? It's really laughable. Tsunade's face also showed a cold smile. At this point, Tsunade chose to believe in Ryujiro. Kanoha had been oppressed for too long. It was because of constant retreating that other villages thought Kanoha was easy to bully. They needed to show the entire ninja world that even if it had weakened, the former glory of the strongest ninja village still remained. Hokage-sama? Kakashi was stunned. Even the Hokage was acting recklessly. If war broke out between the Land of Fire and the Land of Lightning, it could trigger the Fourth Great Ninja War. What on earth did the Hokage and Ryujiro just say? Enough, Tsunade. As the Hokage, you are too reckless. Koharu glared angrily at Ryujiro and Tsunade. Tsunade stared icily at Koharu. Umbu, escort Elder Koharu out. Tsunade, if you dare touch me, I will push for your removal as Hokage. But Tsunade ignored her. After Koharu was taken away, the atmosphere in the hall grew even heavier. A's face was as dark as ink. Tsunade, I'll give you a chance to take back your words. Apologize and I will pretend this never happened. No need. You're being too overbearing and arrogant. Kanoha will never apologize, Tsunade said forcefully. Boom. An unstoppable aura erupted from A, silver arcs of electricity crackling around him. His hair stood up instantly, making Ryujiro think he was transforming into a super scion. Good, Kanoha. It seems you are determined to go your own way. Do you really think the Land of Lightning is as easy to scare as the Land of Wind? A's voice roared like a ferocious lion, exuding unparalleled might. Rakage, do you want to know who killed Darui? At this moment, Ryujiro spoke again. Even Tsunade was anxious now. Brat, don't say any more. All the Cloud Shinobi's eyes changed, and A's gaze turned exceptionally grim. Kid, do you know who killed Darui? If you tell me the killer name, I might consider sparing you. A smile played at the corners of Ryujiro's mouth as he slowly drew his Zampakuto. Most people didn't understand what Ryujiro was doing, especially Kakashi and Gai, who were extremely tense. Kyoka Suijets, Ryujiro whispered, turning his gaze to A with a mocking look. I killed Derui with this sword. Ryujiro's smile looked as sinister as a monster about to devour someone. The faces of the cloud shinobi changed drastically, and Maboi was especially horrified. Madman. A complete madman. Did this Hokage assistant realize what his words meant? Regardless of the truth, once spoken, the situation was irreversible. Everyone's minds echoed with the same thought. War. It's coming. An overwhelming aura burst from A his muscular body emanating terrifying lightning. In the next moment, 
He moved at lightning speed to Ryujiro, aiming to kill. It happened so fast that no one could react. Splat. A spear-like hand pierced through Ryujiro's chest, spraying blood everywhere. Everyone was horrified, a frown as he noticed Ryujiro didn't react at all. So the rumors about Kanoha's sword genius were false after all. Was this the strength of a mere Hokage assistant? Capable of defeating a tailed beast? Laughable. Maboy's face turned pale. She pointed, trembling at AC. Rakage sama what are you doing? Maboy screamed in horror, raised his head with difficulty, looking at the familiar face and puzzled eyes. His mind went blank. Lord, Rakage. C fell backward heavily, not understanding why Rakage killed him. With this final confusion, C became a cold corp. The real Ryujiro stood aside, smiling coldly. Derui was known as the Rakage's right hand, and C as his left. And now Ryujiro had severed both arms of Rakage. A's mind was blank at this moment, staring blankly at the body of C lying on the ground. Ninjas from both Cloud Village and Kanoha were all stunned. Has Rakage gone mad? C was their village's elite jonin. Reportedly, he was one of Rakage's trusted subordinates, yet Rakage dared to suddenly kill this so-called trusted subordinate in front of everyone. Tsunade couldn't help but look at Ryujiro in shock. What has this little brat done? Tsunade had also learned from Jiraiya that Ryujiro possessed genjutsu skills, but he had never demonstrated them in front of ordinary people. Manipulating the members of Akatsuki, such genjutsu was chilling beyond belief. See? No. A roared in grief and anger, his body erupting with terrifying lightning release chakra. The terrifying aura emanating from him made everyone present change their expressions. His eyes were bloodshot, staring ferociously at Ryujiro as if he wanted to devour everything. You brat, what have you done to me? A's thunderous roar shook all the ninjas present. His angry gaze was filled with endless flames, as if he wanted to tear Ryujiro apart. Ryujiro smiled faintly. Just a genjutsu? If it weren't for the genjutsu, it would probably be me lying dead now. Genjutsu? Maboy's eyes suddenly contracted, and the Cloud Village ninjas glared angrily at Ryujiro. No wonder. No wonder Lord Rakage suddenly attacked CC. Died at the hands of Lord Rakage like this. That puzzled look and incredulous expression kept flashing through A's mind. You damned brat. Old man. I'm going to kill you. Now Maboy finally understood why Darui had Cloud Village blades on him. Just like Rakage fell victim to Genjutsu, the other ninjas mistook Darui for Ryujiro. What kind of Genjutsu was this? Never heard of such a Genjutsu before, even the Genjutsu expert Kurinai was unclear. Too terrifying. Kanoha's swordsman was too terrifying. Ryujiro sneered. Are you sure that the me you'll see later will be the real me? A's pupils instantly shrank to pinpoints. He gritted his teeth so hard that a trace of blood oozed from the corner of his mouth due to the excessive force. You brat. Do you really want to start a war? He had never thought he would fear a kid from Kanoha so much. Kanoha, what a monster they've bred. Start a war. We never intended to, but you are being unreasonable. If you hadn't attacked me first, C wouldn't have died by your hands. It's all your own fault. Ryujiro's voice echoed through the hall. The gaze of Kanoha's elite jonin towards Ryujiro instantly changed. The Ryujiro before them was unlike any they had ever seen, tearing apart the facade of a weak scholar. It felt as if everything was in Ryujiro's hands. Fortunately, Ryujiro belonged to their side. If it were another village, it would not only be a nightmare for Kanoha but a nightmare that other major villages could not get rid of. Now Tsunade finally understood why Ryujiro was so confident. Even Rakage wouldn't dare to act rashly again with such genjutsu skills. You, I was momentarily speechless. He had come to Kanoha to take a bite out of Kanoha, but instead of taking a bite out of Kanoha, he had lost an arm. The positions of C and Darui were significant in A's heart. They were both excellent subordinates. Lord Rakage. Maboy leaned over and whispered something in A's ear. A listened to Maboy's words, and his volatile emotions gradually stabilized. At this time, Another unexpected situation might occur. They hadn't noticed when they had fallen into a Jinjutsu. If they were to fight with Kanoha's ninjas at this time, their side would suffer the most significant losses. A stitch in time saves nine. Maboi was Rakage's secretary and military strategist. At this moment, Rakage absolutely could not act impulsively. As a village Kage, he must manage his emotions well. This seemingly young man was surprisingly deep. When Maboi touched Ryujiro's gaze, she briefly lost her mind. What kind of eyes were those? Hawkeye? No. Abyss. An endless abyss, an abyss without end. Oomph. Kanoha. Let's wait and see, I won't let you off. Kid. 
I looked ferociously at Ryujiro, and all the ninjas from the Cloud Village left behind cold eyes. After taking C's body away, every time A saw C's cold body, it hurt even more. After the Cloud Village ninjas left, Tsunade and Kakashi's gaze turned to Ryujiro. The hall fell silent for a terrifying moment, but everyone realized one thing. This time, Rakage might really go to war with the Land of Fire, and the war between the two countries might even become the fourth great ninja war. They didn't understand why Hokage-sama had accompanied Ryujiro in his mischief. The other four great nations had always been watching Kanoha closely. After several great ninja wars, all four countries had launched wars against Kanoha, and Kanoha's geographical location and environment had always been a delicious morsel in the eyes of the other great nations. Kid, there's no turning back this time. Tsunade turned her head sternly. Do you understand what will happen next? The elite Jonin nodded solemnly. The outbreak of war was inevitable. But this war came too suddenly. This was completely initiated by Kanoha. Ryujiro, can you tell us now what exactly your Jinjutsu ability affects? Why did Rakage kill his loyal subordinate? Tsunade looked deeply at Ryujiro. Ryujiro glanced calmly at everyone in the hall and slowly spoke. The five senses? My Jinjutsu completely controls the enemy's five senses, making them believe everything about appearance, form, quality, texture, and even scent exactly as I wish. A Jinjutsu that completely controls the five senses? Was this still Jinjutsu? No wonder, no wonder Rakage suddenly attacked C. He mistook C for Ryujiro. Such an ability is truly terrifying. Ryujiro felt that there was no longer any need to conceal his abilities, as everyone present did not realize that they were trapped in the Jinjutsu of a mirage. If he wished, he could completely control the entire higher-ups of Kanoha. What a terrifying ability! A few days later, the Land of Lightning invited the other four great nations to the Land of Lightning to discuss the matter of launching a war against the Land of Fire. Thus, the entire ninja world trembled. Abito, war is about to break out. Zetsu emerged slowly from the ground. War. Kanoha, how dare you? Abito's figure was filled with disdain for Kanoha. Indeed, how could Kanoha have such courage? The current Kanoha was not the strong Kanoha it once was, and Kanoha's consistently strong actions were unimaginable and the outbreak of war has disrupted both Zetsu and Abito's plans. Currently, they have collected the chakra of four-tailed beasts. Wanting to resurrect the Ten Tails was no small feat, the fourth great ninja war. It seems it's also time for Akatsuki to show its strength to the entire shinobi world. Danzo was really lucky to have encountered such an unpredictable event at this time. But, the position of Hokage, I'm afraid Danzo will never achieve it. Because Kanoha will no longer exist, and our plan will continue. It's not easy to stop a war. It's like trying to get the major nations to trust each other, which was almost impossible as all major nations were suspicious of each other. And that's why the ninja world frequently erupted into war. Now, the most worried were the smaller nations. When the major nations clash, the small nations suffer. In every shinobi world war, the smaller nations always become the battlegrounds, with no ability to resist. Kanoha, why had it suddenly become so dominant? Just a few days ago, the Land of Flowers was planning to sign an alliance with the Land of Fire, but now they immediately recalled their envoy. They didn't want to be dragged into the flames of war by Kanoha. That's reality. If the Land of Lightning invites them to join the war, they won't hesitate to act against Ryujiro and Naruto. A few months had passed. The thunder in the Land of Lightning had been loud, but in the entire ninja world, it's relatively quiet. It seems negotiations among the other four nations were not going smoothly. It's said that the Rakage and Suchikage even had a quarrel, causing the meeting to end in disarray and unable to continue. During these months, the atmosphere in Kanoha had also calmed down a lot, and the dissatisfaction towards Ryujiro had gradually subsided. Ryujiro had still overestimated the tolerance between the four major nations. Do they really believe they could unite to conquer Kanoha? Don't even think about it. By the time the four nations unite to attack Kanoha, it might have turned into a war among the four nations. Character Template Sosuke Aizen Character Unlock Progress 40% After multiple confrontations with Aizen in the spiritual space, Ryujiro's progress has also reached 40%. Not only that, this was just the progress of unlocking the character template. Ryujiro has already changed significantly from before. He exuded an otherworldly aura all over his body, different from ordinary people. This feeling was unique. It's as if Ryujiro was like an immortal who was unaffected by worldly matters. However, Ryujiro doesn't want to end up like Aizen, becoming a monstrous creature. He also believes that under his perfection, Hogyoku will also become different. Ryujiro-kun. 
Hinata came running over with small step, and when Ryujiro saw Hinata at that moment, his brow furrowed involuntarily. The chakra in Hinata's body seemed different. Hinata, did something happen to you? Ryujiro asked. Hinata showed a surprised expression, and this time she came to tell Ryujiro about this. Ryujiro, you actually know about this? Hinata said in surprise. Ryujiro, last night an old man appeared in my dream. The old man claimed to be Hamura Atsutsuki, and said, he was the younger brother of the legendary sage of the Six Paths. In the dream, this old man told me that perhaps you could end the turmoil in the shinobi world. Hamura Atsutsuki? No wonder, no wonder the chakra on Hinata seemed off. It turns out to be the chakra of the Atsutsuki clan. Sure enough, even Hamura Atsutsuki was watching over the Shworld. Both Hagoromo and Hamura had always been watching over the entire ninja world. Ryujiro wondered when he would meet these legendary figures. Atsutsuki Chakra Ryujiro looked at Hinata's somewhat unusual eyes and couldn't help but smile. Perhaps the Tensigen was about to be born. Ryujiro, why are you smiling? Hinata asked puzzledly. Ryujiro rubbed Hinata's little head and smiled. It's nothing, that old man really has some insight. Hinata. At the same time, in a spacious place within Kanoha village, where Jiraiya trained Naruto. Pervy Sage, what are we practicing today? Naruto asked curiously. Compared to before, Jiraiya's expression was much more serious. Naruto, this training is different from before. You're going to control the Nine Tails Chakra. The Nine Tails? Naruto looked puzzled. Jiraiya pointed to Naruto's abdomen with his finger. It's the monster inside your body. Naruto's face changed instantly as he understood. Pervy Sage, what exactly is the monster inside my body? The people in the village say I'm a demon fox. Is it related to that? Go. Upon hearing the words demon fox, Jiraiya's heart pained for a moment, and he looked at Naruto with a slightly guilty look. This child, at such a young age, has experienced too much unfair treatment. Fortunately, after Ryujiro became friends with Naruto, his personality gradually became more cheerful. Originally, the fourth Hokage saved the village, but the people in the village regarded Naruto, the Jinchuriki, as the source of the disaster. If it weren't for Naruto's personality, and if it were someone else, they would have turned dark long ago. Jiraiya explained to Naruto about the Nine Tails. Tailed beasts are aggregations of chakra. In other words, tailed beasts cannot be killed by ninjas. Even if they disappear, they will be reborn in a few hundred years. And the Nine Tails was the most powerful of the Nine Tailed Beasts. The ominous chakra that erupted from Naruto several times before originated from the Nine Tails. As the Jinchuriki, Naruto must learn how to control the Nine Tails chakra. This was the riskiest part of this training. He must unlock part of Naruto's seal to draw out the Nine Tails Chakra. If he can't control the Nine Tails Chakra, the consequences will be unimaginable for Naruto himself. Naruto, are you ready? Jiraiya said seriously. Naruto nodded with a serious expression. Jiraiya touched the seal on Naruto's abdomen with his hand, and wisps of blue smoke gradually emanated from the octagonal seal. And in the next moment, a desire for destruction arose from his heart, and Naruto trembled all over. The next moment, the terrifying Nine Tails Chakra stirred up a huge storm. Naruto lay on the ground, his face more obvious because of the influence of the Tailed Beast's Chakra. At this time, Naruto's consciousness had entered the ceiling space, looking around blankly as he gradually approached the cell of the seal. Suddenly, at this moment, a crimson evil eye appeared in the darkness, with that grim fox head and the terrifying Chakra emanating from its whole body. The massive body of the Nine Tails gradually revealed itself. As the chakra in the ceiling space gradually lost focus, the Nine Tails chakra began to envelop his body. His eyes, now filled with the Nine Tails hostility, mirrored the beast itself. Good, just like this. Under the influence of the Nine Tails chakra, memories of past injustices surged in Naruto's mind. The image of the third Hokage's death played over and over. Outside, Naruto lay sprawled on the ground, his body increasingly overwhelmed by the Nine Tails chakra. Chakra bubbles emerged continuously, bubbling up with a gurgle and grew in intensity. Jiraiya's expression darkened instantly. Has Naruto lost consciousness? Swoosh, a more terrifying burst of chakra erupted than before, the pressure of the Nine Tails chakra scraping against Jiraiya's exposed skin like blades. At the same time, Naruto's tails had increased to three. When Naruto's tails reached four, Jiraiya's heart trembled suddenly. Naruto's skin was burned by the Nine Tails chakra, and the evil chakra gradually corroded Naruto's body. Dark red chakra spread over Naruto, covering his entire body. As Naruto completed his partial transformation, he roared angrily like a miniature Nine Tails. 
Is this the Nine Tails Chakra? It's truly terrifying. Jiraiya felt as if facing a mini Nine Tails, a tremendous sense of crisis enveloping him instantly. Naruto, now partially transformed into the Nine Tails, had lost consciousness. All that remained was the beast's desire to destroy everything. The beast-like Naruto fixed his eyes full of hostility on Jiraiya. Suddenly, Jiraiya felt a chilling cold run down his spine. The beast-like Naruto moved with incredible speed. There was a thunderous boom, a huge cloud of smoke billowed behind Naruto, leaving a massive crater on the ground. So fast, Jiraiya's pupils constricted. He narrowly dodged Naruto's attack, but the impact still caused a huge explosion of chakra on the ground. The ground exploded, cracks spreading gradually. With just four tails, Naruto already possessed such terrifying power. If all nine tails were to emerge, even Jiraiya couldn't help but gasp. He had been too reckless earlier. He had underestimated the power of the nine tails. One careless move and facing the partially transformed Naruto could cost him his life. Earth release. Swamp of the underworld. A massive swamp appeared beneath Naruto's feet. Naruto's body was gradually swallowed by the swamp, but such a small trick could hardly restrain the partially transformed Naruto. The beast-like Naruto roared and broke free from the swamp. At this moment, in the sealed space, the Nine Tails watched the unconscious Naruto with a sinister smile. Good good, just like that. Destroy everything. Only by using my power can you get everything you want. Once Naruto fully transformed into the Nine Tails, the Nine Tails could use this opportunity to break through the weakened seal. He really had to thank Jiraiya for giving him this chance. The first thing the Nine Tails would do upon breaking the seal was to destroy Konoha, the ninja village that he hated the most. Meanwhile, in the usual training place with Hinata, Ryujiro frowned and suddenly stopped his movements. Hinata looked at Ryujiro puzzledly. What's wrong, ryujiro kun This chakra. Is it Naruto? No, it's the Nine Tails chakra. Has its chakra already reached here? It seems that this is not just a simple leak of the Nine Tails chakra. Ryujiro glanced deeply at Hinata. Hinata, wait here for a moment. I have something to take care of. He was now 100% certain that this unsettling feeling was indeed due to the Nine Tails Chakra. Even the chakra he had absorbed from one tail was restless. Ryujiro suddenly remembered a scene explained in the original anime. Could it be that Jiraiya used the five elements unseal to partially release the seal on Naruto's body? Otherwise, there was no other explanation for this sudden outburst of Nine Tails Chakra. Jiraiya had underestimated the Nine Tails after all. Hinata watched as Ryujiro disappeared from sight and sat down on a nearby rock, waiting for Ryujiro to return. Boom! A huge explosion echoed. Jiraiya's face turned pale as he watched the scene. With just a single wave of his hand, Naruto had unleashed such a terrifying shockwave. The power of the Nine Tails was truly despair-inducing. Roar! The partially transformed Naruto let out a terrifying roar once again. Jiraiya's face showed unprecedented seriousness. What was Naruto going to do next? The beast Naruto opened his mouth wide, chakra bubbles overflowing from his body and floating in the air. Seeing this scene, Jiraiya's face changed drastically. He could clearly feel the high-density chakra within those chakra bubbles. The chakra gradually gathered and compressed, forming a chakra mass resembling a tailed beast bomb. Such high-density chakra, even one hit would be fatal. Damn it, he had been too reckless this time. It was already too late to summon the two toads and enter sage mode. Go! The beast Naruto swallowed the energy ball formed by the gathering chakra into his abdomen. The next moment, Naruto's body swiftly expanded, his lower half swelling up. A sense of impending death shrouded Jiraiya. Condense. Compress. Tailed beast bomb. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.